her former co-worker, Diamond Horton, for vandalizing her car and harassment while working together. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2141, Hill versus Horton. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Hill. Yes, sir. What's this man's name? Claudius Brown. You have a child with him? Yes, ma'am. Who's 10 years old? Yes. Is that your only child? No, ma'am. How many children do you have? I have four children. Is he the oldest? She is the oldest. She? She's the oldest? Yes. Does she see her father? No. Hasn't seen him in how long? Months to a year. The defendant has two children with him? Yes, ma'am. How old are they? Well, he'll be two on the ninth, and then I have a 10-month-old. And then, according to what I've read here in either the complaint or the answer, he has at least one other child. Yes, ma'am. Which is how old? Probably about... Seven. Seven. Does he see that child? Every blue moon when she brings them. So once in a while. Yeah. So he has four children all together? Yes, ma'am. And you currently live with him? Yes. What does he do for a living? He works at a warehouse. And you? But I'm a certified nurse assistant. Who takes care of the kids? Me and Claudius. You work different shifts? Yes, he works overnight. I work day shift. So you're currently working? Yes, ma'am. But there came a time... I'm just trying to figure out why everybody's sort of mad and fighting over him. I don't understand it. It must be something that you ladies see that is hidden from me because it is your claim, Miss Hill, that Miss Horton not only vandalized your car, but that she caused you to be fired from your job. She says that you filed a false restraining order against her and that actually you caused her to lose her job and it's all over the prize. <laughs> I can never really understand. How long have you been working in your current job? About three months now. So you got another job? Yes, ma'am. Do you like it? Yes. Making about the same money or more? A little less. <laughs> and where are you working? I'm a machine operator. So you got another job? Yes. Because all this started when all of a sudden you found yourselves working in the same place? Yes. And in what month was that? That was... Um, I started the job May 31st, but it spilled over into June is when everything took place. And how long were you working at the same place? Three months. I started March 4th of 2022. OK, so it was a short-term employment for both of you. And you were there first? Yes, ma'am. And you came shortly thereafter? Yes. Shortly after she started to work. Had you ever met each other? No. Well, explain to me what the problem was. So there's a history that started back in 2019 via text messages and Facebook. So we've had an ongoing beef for years. Who cares? Now you're going to both get smarter. You're going to come here today and you're going to both get smarter. And if he has two children that he doesn't see, her daughter yeah. and your seven-year-old, according to what I hear that you see once every blue moon, that's a basket that I wouldn't be in. So you have a history of bad texting back and forth and stuff. I don't care about that. Let's get to the two allegations of, one, that she vandalized your tires. When and what proof do you have that she vandalized your tires? This is after you both found yourself in the same working environment. It wasn't my tires. She actually keyed my vehicle. Keyed it? Yes. On what date? On June 18th. And I have my police report from that... OK, I'll look at the police report. Did you see her key your car? I did not see her, but I requested video footage from the job, and they stated that they would give me the video footage. Do we have it? We don't have it, but the city attorney was unable to receive it as well. But I have a letter from the city attorney. You don't have it here for me, and you didn't see her key your car. Yes. What we're here for is a trial, so I need what proof you have that she keyed your car. I assume your car was at work... Yes. ..when it was keyed, OK? And I'm assuming that you don't like each other, that things got nasty, heated on social media, back and forth. I'm assuming all that is true. All I need for you to show me is proof that she keyed your car. Well, I have audio recording from HR where they're stating that everything was initiated by the defendant. And Arkansas is a one-party state, so I can play the audio for you. Oh, was she on the audio? They're talking about the video in the recording and that they were supposed to give it to me. Can't help you. OK. This next part of your case is that she caused you to lose your job. Yes. Go. So I have my termination letter stating that they're defended. I'd like to see a termination letter. That's a joke.
This is the description of the termination letter and description of the violation. Kiana has been involved in altercations with another employee. While the other employee instigated the situations, it has gotten to a point where multiple other staff are now involved. I don't know what that means. At this point, it is affecting patient care and causing a hostile work environment, termination effective immediately. I assume that you have a similar letter because you were yes, terminated. May I see it? Yes. I also have a final warning. Just a sec, just a second. Okay. On Wednesday, June 15th, 2022, Diamond, that's you. Yes, ma'am. Was given a final written notice concerning harassment of other employees. It has since been reported that the harassment has continued. Also, multiple other staff have been pulled into this situation to the point that it's affecting patient care. And it's a termination letter. Okay. So, I'm assuming, since you got this, you were notified previously about having any communication with no, each other. You no, were not. I was out for COVID. I had just got back to work June 15th of 2022. And I found out that Hill was working there. I never knew she was working there at all. And so, I got That's called to the true, office. What was the beef about? I don't understand. The other baby mama. It's the reason why we're into it. The seven-year-old's mother? Yes. Yeah. The seven-year-old's mother? Yes. Yes. And later today... How much money in total did you pay Miss Goodwin for her work in planning your wedding? I paid her 50 bucks. Well, don't you think that's ridiculous? Kiana Hill claims her former co-worker, Diamond Horton, harassed her at work and caused her to be fired. Diamond is countersuing for filing a false restraining order. My question was a relatively simple one because I'm going to make this as simple as possible before I probably dismiss both of them. I would like to see after June 15th, 2022, up until the date of the termination, which is June 23rd, 2022, how the harassment continued. I would like you to show me from June 15th. The actual date was June 14th. Well, this says June 15th. I wasn't well, working. To, to, shh. She this violation... My friends as well, we have I the just, date time stamp. I just want you to show me after June 15th, between June 15th and June 23rd... Yes, ma'am. ...what further acts that you allege are acts of harassment occurred. I have the schedule showing the date. Shh, shh. Well, I don't know what this is. A fake Facebook page that she made. How do you know this is a fake Facebook page that she made? That was a requested message that was sent to me after her and myself had a conversation, well, I... and she was threatening to beat me up. <laughs> and it says, since you didn't apologize, D is going to beat you up. Okay. The D that they're referring to is Diamond. Oh, my God. <laughs> what is this? The 870 number is her calling my phone. Okay. And 870... The missed calls. This was on what date? That was on June 19th. What were you calling her for at 6 o'clock in the evening? Well, the day she accused me of vandalizing her car is uh, the day that we had worked together. She called the police, and her family came up there, and they all had guns. That's the reason she got terminated, because she brought a gun on the premises. That's and they came up there states. to jump me. That's a lie. When I went outside... I just want to ask you why you called her. I called her to ask her, because the June 16th is when I sat down. I had a conversation together to drop all beef. Like, she no was issue. While she was I don't want you. He, don't I you want to say you her. can't control yourself? I understand you're sending me a bad message. If you can't control yourself here, which is a very controlled setting, I'm going to say to myself, this is somebody who can't control themselves outside of the setting. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I called her to ask her why did she feel like I vandalized her vehicle because before that, we sat down and we had a conversation together at work saying it should be dead. Like, why well, we should not have any beef any over him at all, and that the kids were involved. And so we agreed to let it go. So then she accused me of vandalizing her vehicle. What was the beef about? I don't understand. The other baby mama is the reason why we're into it. The seven-year-old's mother? Yes. Yeah. The seven-year-old's mother? Yes. 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 
So we have no proof of vandalizing, and this is nonsense. You want to tell me about the restraining order that you filed? There was an order of protection placed after she was harassing me at work. May I see it? Yes. But it was also rescinded. By the way, does he pay child support for your daughter? Yes, ma'am. He does. How much? He pays probably about two thirty nine every two weeks, somewhere does around Does he there. pay it to you? Yes. Well, it's through child support. But he pays it to you? Yes. And he's current? Yes. Well, there's back pay, but he's currently paying. Okay. So was there a hearing on this order of protection? It was not. There was no, not. There you was not a hearing. Just a second. Did you appear? No. I rescinded it. I understand that. I just want to know the court found that the petition was dismissed. It was a false accusation. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. So the reason that the order states it was dismissed is that the petitioner doesn't meet the definition of family or household member as defined in whatever statute is and therefore does not allege the existence of domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. Doesn't address the gravamen of the petition. It's a more procedural dismissal mm -hmm. because she's not related to you in any way. I mean, having children with a person in common doesn't make you, at least in this jurisdiction, part of the household. Okay, you both look like nice ladies. You know he has kids with two other people. Not a great track record. He not really a... don't see them because they don't let them. They don't want well, their kids around there's a, me. There's, there's a reason, you know, maybe. Not a great track record. It's not good for your children. It's really not good for your children. I mean, your children, believe it or not, your children are related to each other. I mean, you may not have any interest whatsoever, but when your children get older, they may have a curiosity about who their half-sibling is, what they look like, uh, they like. They may have interest. So what I can suggest to you is your children didn't ask to be born. The idea that you exert any energy whatsoever negative energy with regard to each other is ridiculous. Really ridiculous. But for him, you wouldn't have any contact with each other. Am I, right. am I reading that right? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah. Well, why? He hasn't been in your life in years. And I know that he shouldn't have been in your life at least for the last seven years because he's got a seven-year-old with somebody else, right? And you have a 10-year-old. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, except for your daughter. Mm -hmm. And so it, can I state that it's, the situation is not about him. It's about the harassment, the lost wages. That's more of my concern with her. It has nothing I, to do with I him. I was working before you. I was working as y'all. You came just, to my job. Just like, a second. What I'm telling you is, right now, and I don't have to get into it any further, right now, she's got the guy. I don't care. Just a second. Right now, she's got the guy. So that would perhaps give rise to some animus on your part. With regard to her position, he's working. And he's paying money to your child, mm -hmm. which is, in her mind, taking money away from her two children that she has with him. Well, that's his responsibility. You knew about that I child didn't... and you knew about the seven-year-old. Mm -hmm. So what I'm telling you is there's a lot of negative energy going on. You both got jobs relatively soon after this. It was probably not a good idea for you to stay in the same place. And your employer was absolutely right and actually quite brave in today's times to say we're terminating both of you because your job is affecting patient care. Because it's not only the two of you. Other employees have been drawn into this drama. That's because she brought them in. I don't know whether she brought them in or not. And I don't care whether she brought them in. And later today... She wasn't your best friend. She wasn't even a close friend. You hadn't spoken to her in years. So clearly you called her to do a job for you that was her profession. And in addition to doing that, she bought you your wedding dress. Kiana Hill claims her former co-worker, Diamond Horton, harassed her at work and caused her to be fired. Diamond is countersuing for filing a false restraining order. Now, of all the places that you have to work, you had to work in a place where she was working. I didn't know she worked there. And she didn't know that you were there. She did on the first day that I started, and she told everyone who I was and what the situation was. I was out for COVID. COVID. Okay, who cares? <laughs> anyway, cases are dismissed. Goodbye, good luck. This court is adjourned. I feel like the judge, she made the right decision. She didn't listen.
Because I'm with the baby, her baby's father, which is now my baby's father. He had nothing to do with this situation. I just want to be there for my kids. You know, to his credit, mm -hmm. he's paying support. Sure. Has a job. Has a job. And I don't know why these two women feud yeah. when, according to plaintiff, she has no interest in him anymore. And she's getting support. She's getting support. I just don't understand. There are so many things that life has that present obstacles. Why, yeah. why fight over a guy? There's many good causes you could get behind and yeah, fight yeah, for. Let's yeah. choose one of those. Yeah, right. <laughs> Case number 2149, Goodwin versus Philpott. All parties, please step forward. Manuelita Goodwin is suing wedding planner Kayla Philpott for repayment of items purchased for Kayla's wedding. Miss Philpott, how long have you known Miss Goodwin? Um, since I was a child. I don't really remember much of her when I was a child, but she remembers me as a baby. Well, I know what she remembers. You were getting married. When? What was the date of the wedding? May 6, 2021. Where was the wedding supposed to be held? It was going to be held in Turlock. Is that a, a in wedding venue? Yes. How many people were coming? Um, it ended up being around 25 people. It was kind of small. How many people did you invite? 60. But 25 came. Yeah. It was during the height of COVID. Tell me, when you contacted Ms. Goodwin, you contacted her because you knew she was a wedding planner, mm. right? Yes. And when did you contact her? I believe I contacted her in January. And at the time you contacted her, had you made any wedding plans at all? Um, very little. Okay. During the course of your wedding plan, and she said she would help you. Yes. Prior to January 2021, when you contacted her, when was the last time you saw her? I can't even remember. Well, was it in 2020? No. 2019? No. So you hadn't seen her in at least two or three years? Yes. How many times in that two or three year period did you communicate with her by text or by phone? Never. So the reason that you called her in January of 2021 was to assist you with your wedding? Yes. And she did? Yes. That's why we're here. Yes. She said she laid out a whole bunch of money for you in planning your wedding and purchasing things for your wedding. And she wants to be reimbursed for that. So when you called and asked her to help plan your wedding, what did you ask her to do for you? I asked her to help me because I really didn't have a sense of like direction of what to do for a wedding. And I asked her if she would pay for a decoration. And then I told her that I was getting my tax return and that I'd pay her for the decoration. And we started with that. Started with that. Mm -hmm. How much money in total did you pay Miss Goodwin for her work in planning your wedding? I paid her 50 bucks. Well, don't you think that's ridiculous? It is ridiculous, right? You called her and engaged her to be a wedding planner for your wedding. She wasn't your best friend. She wasn't even a close friend. You hadn't spoken to her or seen her in years. So clearly you called her to do a job for you that was her profession, her vocation. And in addition to doing that, she bought you your wedding dress. Yes. How much was your wedding dress? I ended up, oh, well, we got a few dresses. The first one didn't work out, and I believe that one was 200 and then... Who paid for that one? She did. So the first one didn't work out. Mm -hmm. That was $200. Yes. And it didn't work out. Why? I didn't like the fit on it. Didn't like it. Okay, but you bought it. Well, yeah. she bought it. Yes. And where is that dress now? I gave it back, and we ended up returning it. Okay, so you got your money back? Yes. Oh, great. Strike that out. And what about the next dress? The next dress, it was from Amazon, and we didn't like the fit either, so we ended up returning that one. And who, that one was... Who ordered that dress? You or the plaintiff? I believe it was me. Okay, and what did you finally end up with? I ended up getting a dress from David's Bridal that I really liked. How much was that? I believe it was 500 Who paid for that? She did. So, so far, you've paid $50 for her services, and so far, at least what I know, just for one dress, it was $500. Mm. Don't you think you owe her compensation for her work? Well, she told me that, you know, she was really, really generous. She was giving, like, I don't know, a lot of stuff, and I believe that I don't owe her because she offered to do that. <laughs> it sounds stupid to you. Okay, I know, it sounds stupid to you. How much did you lay out for her for her wedding? In the receipts that you have for me, how much did you lay out for her for her wedding? Thirty-two eighty-seven ninety-five. And when you asked her to be reimbursed for that money, what did she tell you? That she was going to pay some of it, 
when she received her tax returns, actually her wife's tax returns, and also she was working overtime to pay me back. She also stated that she was going to be getting a judgment from a state farm check that she would be making payments, and she did pay the $50 after she made a payment arrangement with me to pay $200 a month back and she did make the first payment of $50, and from that point, she didn't make any additional payments. So we did work together, Your Honor, to try to sell the items that were at her sister's home. I requested both Kayla and her wife at the time to sell the items. They were sitting in her sister's garage in Stockton, where I do not live. Um, I did come down for two weeks to try to help sell those items. Were any of those items sold? Yes. They did were. you get any money back from I those? I did. How much? $106. And then I had to pay for shipping for those items. How much did you pay for shipping? $75. And the rest of the items are still in her sister's possession. Okay. Thirty-two twenty-six. How much did you pay for your wedding other than the plaintiff's participation? Um, 8000 Did you pay that? My mom paid for the venue, and then I paid for the other things. How much was the venue? 4000 so you paid 4000 you personally, and what about your wife? Well, we share an account, so it was from both of us. What about her $3,200? Just don't have it. Just didn't pay it. Okay, anything else, Ms. Goodwin? No. 3226, judgment for the plaintiff. This court is adjourned. She told me that a lot of the stuff was gifts. I don't have any more wedding woes. She did a great job with the wedding. She thought it was a gift. She's really, really gifted at that. Never gonna loan money to her again. <laughs> That was a relatively easy case. I think even the defendant acknowledged, besides just relying on the goodwill of the plaintiff, she had no real excuse to not pay her back and makes our job. Is suing business owner Amber Howard for damages and defamation to her pet daycare business. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2173, Langley versus Howard. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Langley, your complaint states that you live in a rural area, 13 acres. Your business is pet sitting. Correct. The property that you own does not have running water. Correct. So all the water for your property has to be trucked in. Yes. The defendant is the owner of? Do you the owner's manage? wife. The same thing. They own a water business where they deliver by truck massive amounts of water, and you had used them for a period of time. Prior to Labor Day of 2021, when this incident occurred, how long have you been using the defendants? Probably about a year. And how often do they deliver water to your property? Four times a week, usually three times for the pool and once for the house. Okay. And each time they came, was that on a set time during the week? We tried to get a set time, but it varied quite often. Okay. Would they call before they came? No. For the year that you had them, when they came, did you pay them at the time that they came? Yes, I did. Oftentimes, we paid in advance. So we paid so for the entire week. So you either paid week. in advance or you paid at the time of the delivery? Yes. Did you give them a check or cash? Check. Now, let's get to Labor Day 2021. On what day were they supposed to come? I believe it was the 4th of September. It was on a Friday. And who was at home to accept the delivery? We didn't know when they were coming, but I had taken my employee out to lunch, and I called my nephew, who was there holding down the fort, and told him, if they deliver okay. water, let them know I forgot the check, okay. so they can either deliver or come back later. Well, you live in a rural area. Coming back later is a big inconvenience because you forgot the check. Yeah, could be. Yeah. It happened that it was a big inconvenience because you went out for lunch mm -hmm. and you left a nephew. They came, the check wasn't there, and they left with the water. Now, what time did you come? I wasn't the one who delivered the water. It was my husband, but I believe he had came. No, he'll tell me. Oh, okay. So this was about a year and a half ago. I don't remember the exact time, but it was an AM delivery because we were going out of town Friday evening, going up north, so I was trying to get done with our route fairly early so that we could get So out the home. first time you came to the house was in the morning? That's correct. Not lunchtime? No. It was probably somewhere around 10 a.m. if I was to guess. Okay. And when you got there that one time, the nephew was there? 
That's correct. And tell me what happened. Well, the nephew, for starters, is about 12 years old. And the reason why we don't necessarily have a time frame for businesses is because if it's between business hours, when we show up and if they need water, usually that shouldn't be an issue um, for the Don't business. give me a whole story, yeah. sir. The nephew is 12 years old. Yep. Okay, and he was left in charge of the pets. That's correct. Okay, so the nephew was left in charge of these animals, and when you came, there was no check. What happened? Um, it wasn't even about the money, the reason why I left. Um, the reason why I showed up there is he was talking on the phone, and he said, we are not ready for water right now. He was on his phone? Yes. Where did this conversation take place? Near the, the uh, pool, the dog pool. And we were actually taking 4,000 gallons. So I brought my big truck. I'd bring 2,000 for the doggy pool and then 2,000 for the house because it was a holiday weekend, so I had to make sure that we got him enough water to last through the holiday weekend. Okay, and I assume that the plaintiff was satisfied with your service because she had continued with your service for over a year. Yes, that's correct. That's according to you. We had, we had... That's according to you. You yes. had been satisfied with their service because if you weren't, you would have found somebody else. But you had been satisfied with their service. According to you, you paid them in advance. Or on the date of the delivery. On Labor Day, September 4th, you left your 12 year old nephew there. Well, but. Well, how old is he? 13? He's, he's 15. So what? What's the difference? Okay, I'm just well, maybe he's 15 myself. now. Maybe he wasn't in right. 2021. So the nephew said to you, we're not ready for water delivery now. That's is correct. that what you're saying? Now, your business have a phone? Correct. Did the plaintiff ever call you and say, I'm home now, I'm sorry, there was a mix-up? No, so what happened, um, I showed up there, he wasn't ready for water. Um, I told him, I go, that is... What do you have to do to get ready for water? For their purposes, I believe it was to try to use up as much as they can. No, no, don't tell me what you but believe. They... I want to know yep. what you have to do to get ready so, for a water okay. delivery. Do you have to open up a <laughs> spigot? What do you have to do? Okay, so basically they're holding tanks um, that are in basements or in the ground. So normally nobody even has to be there, like 90% of our customers. This particular case, one of their tanks is in a basement which doesn't have an alarm. So in order to fill their tank up, somebody has to be down there with a radio to radio up to us to know when to shut the water off. Okay, so that would have had to have been the nephew who was the, between the ages of 12 and 15 would have had to have been in the basement. That's correct. Okay. And when you came onto the property, he said we're not ready for a water delivery. That's correct. And he would have had to have been in the basement. That's correct. So you left. Yes. Correct. What happened next? Your Honor, I, I told him that I go, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I go, I got a few more stops. I'm going to go do those stops and then I'll come back. And then hopefully you'll be ready and your aunt would be ready for water at that time. So I went and did my two stops. Um, so I used up another 4,000 gallons. I filled back up went back to their house. At this time, it was probably somewhere around 12. And again, he said, we're still not ready for water. So you went back again at noon? Between 12 and 1, I would say. And the plaintiff wasn't home? That's correct, again. How many hours passed between the first delivery and the second? It takes me about 45 minutes per stop. And I know I did about two stops, about an hour and a half it took me before I was back there. And for that hour and a half, she didn't come back. So That's she correct. was either a very late breakfast or a very early lunch. That's correct. Okay, so now they go twice to deliver water to you, and you're not there, and neither is your check. So now you tell me what happened next. Um, Kyle called me. First, he doesn't have a phone, but he, we do have a business line. So he called me on the business line and um, told me that the driver just left. He goes, I don't know where he went. He said, I think who he told Kyle. Who was that? I'm sorry, he's my nephew. Your nephew called you. What time? Well, our lunch is... What? I, I you went before you. lunch? because he was there earlier in the morning. We did not go before lunch. We went 12.30 to 2. The dogs always nap, 12.30 to 2. Okay. We separated the dogs. How many we times did they... And we how were many, five minutes How away. many times did they come to your house to deliver water? According to what I was told, I wasn't there, two. Well, that's what he says. He, he came three. twice. Just, I, we haven't gotten to the third yet, but he came twice to your house and you weren't there. Correct. You're supposed to wait for a service. You're supposed to be there ready for the service. That would be on you. That's not on them, that on you. They came when they were supposed to, to deliver water, and you weren't there, and you left somebody who was not equipped to deal with the situation in charge. And what happened was, you didn't have water, potentially, over the holiday weekend, because they were going away, so you had to scurry to find other water. Correct. That's what this case is about. If your preteen or post-teen nephew was on the telephone, didn't want to be bothered at that moment, that ain't his fault. That's your fault that you left somebody incompetent when you were supposed to get a water delivery. All I'm saying to you is, this is nasty a year later. Nasty.
Brenda Langley, claims business owner Amber Howard defamed her pet daycare business. Amber is countersuing for negative reviews Brenda made toward her business. Okay, so according to you, a year later, you heard something about their business, so you wrote a negative something about their business on the internet. You'll tell me what that is in a moment. And in retaliation for that, they posted a negative comment about your business alleging something that had to do with the animals. So that's what this case is about. Your use of the internet to make trouble. You, a year later, according to you, only posted one negative review, is that right? Correct. And that was a year later? Yes. Do you want me to tell you why? Because hmm? they take the reviews down. You can't leave it. All I I'm tried ask, right all away. All I'm asking you is, I don't want to hear shoulda, woulda, coulda. A year later, you posted a negative review about Correct. them. So I'd like to see the review and why you waited a year. You would have had a full year of positive service from these people. And the day that you had a problem with them was your fault. I just determined that. It was your fault. Okay. So I want to see what you said about them. Miss Langley, so I read this thing. It says, funny how this shows up as a recommendation. Apparently, they took the rating system off their page. They were always shorting us on water for the pool. Well, you use them satisfactorily for a year. So I think that that's baloney. We had had a couple One, of run-ins over it. Once when I complained, the driver said my nephew told him to stop. What is that about? Once when you complained about what? About the pool being short on water. Just so what did your nephew have to do with them? Your nephew was hardly a teenager. What did your nephew have to do with discussing Nothing, things really. with the bro? Nothing. Nothing. He would help them sometimes bring the hose in and things like that, but he was just a helper every once in a while. Well, what he does that mean? He didn't have anything once to do with Once when I it. complained, the driver said my nephew told him to stop. Video surveillance proved he was lying. No one ever approached him and no one spoke to him. I showed the owner the video and he didn't seem to care. The last stroll was when the owner, that would be them, left for a holiday weekend and we had no water and low pool water. Well, that would be your fault. You don't say that here. It just makes it appear as if they left and left you high and dry, but they mm -hmm. came at least twice. He's gonna tell me a third time, probably, to deliver water and you weren't there. When my nephew asked if we could pay next week, he got in his truck and left. That's also your fault. If he would have communicated, I could have brought the money. We were Should've, five minutes away. Just a second. That puts the onus on them. Why weren't you there? This is all on you. This isn't on them. No conversation, no phone call, not even a curse word. I called his wife to find out what happened, and she said they were going out of town for the weekend. And you put in parentheses, too bad. Well, you're allowed well, to go out. To you're that. allowed. <laughs> yeah, you're allowed to go out for lunch right. when their delivery is coming without a check. But they're not allowed to go out for Labor Day, for the weekend. I immediately called a competitor to bail us out. Thank God he took mercy on us and came out right away. We have had excellent service with a competitor ever since. It could have been catastrophic to try not just to live but run a business with no water over the holiday weekend. You should have been home to get your delivery. And so, Can I say something? Sure. I always paid. They knew I was good for the money. And nobody has to be there when they deliver water. We don't watch them deliver water, except for maybe in the house, and Kyle was there to receive it. If just a second. He just told me that one of the water tanks is in the basement. Somebody has to be there in the basement in your house. If your preteen or postteen nephew was on the telephone, didn't want to be bothered at that moment, that ain't his fault. That's your fault that you left somebody incompetent when you were supposed to get a water delivery. All I'm saying to you is, this is nasty a year later. Nasty. And for no reason. I don't hear a reason why this a year later. You want to tell me? I had heard about some bad business practices, so it got me upset again. So I decided to look and find a way to put a review on. They had taken their reviews off the page. So immediately I wanted to put a review on there, but they have it down as a recommendation. 
Who cares? So that's when I left. I just, want, I just still don't understand why a year later you stir this up. So for a year, you were getting water from a competitor. You cut off their system. They seem to be still surviving. You're still in business? Yes. Yeah. They were in business without you. You're in business without them. Right. Okay. So this is nasty. Okay. Now, as a result of being nasty, they wrote a review about you, which is why you're here. Yes. About your business. Yes. May I see that review? Um about her statement saying that she only had gave us one bad review. We have proof that we have multiple bad reviews, not just the one, over that course of a year and a half. May I see, and I'd yes, like to Honor. see them. Did you write more than one negative review? That's okay, right. I'm gonna take a look at them. That's what I posted. Oh, excuse, I'm sorry, this is what I posted right here. I gave you the wrong copy. Oh, well, this is a different one where you say last water hauler suggested we had to kiss whatever or they would not show. They rarely answered a call or a text in a timely manner. I was even late to a party posted at my home. I had zero water and couldn't shower, couldn't get in touch with anybody. The last draw was Friday. They dropped us on a holiday weekend and said that they would see us on Tuesday. I don't think that was a review, Your Honor. Was this not a review? I don't believe so. No, it wasn't it was a review. A it was a comment. Yep. It was a comment. Mm -hmm. It was still out there, alive, out there. So it was really a tit for tat. You Correct. got tired? He wrote that review on my page, so I decided to write a true review about her page. Perfect. So did I get that all right? Good. A pox on both your houses. Brenda Langley has accused business owner Amber Howard of defaming her pet daycare business. Amber claims Brenda created negative reviews a year after their dispute ended. I'm looking to see what you posted about her. He's got it. You want to judge? Thank you. Okay. So you posted this on October the 30th, and this is on a Facebook? Yes. We used to supply water for the puppy pool here three times a week, and our drivers witnessed on multiple occasions the staff mistreating dogs in their care. They would see on multiple occasions dog feces in the pool before they would fill it up. We were going to send our dog there before we knew all this, but I told our dog was too small, and they could not accommodate him. Now that I know the kind of business they run, I'm thankful I kept my pet out of their care. I would think twice before sending your beloved pet there. And then, lucky puppy, that would be you. Funny, I just gave you a poor review on your page. The difference is our review was true. Your review is defamation of character. You can remove your untrue statements, or you can be sued. Your choice. So now I'm going to ask you sort of the same question. The incident happened on Labor Day of 2021. October 30th, and that would be of 2022? Correct. So between the time that they ceased to be customers of yours and a year later, what happened that caused you to write this negative review? So as you can see in the evidence I gave you, she all the time was just saying negative things about our business. We okay. never had said anything so, okay. about so it her was, business. Just a sec. So the answer was, it was tit for tat. Correct. It was tit for tat. She was writing negative reviews about your business. Mm -hmm. So you wrote, which I just determined were untrue. So you wrote a negative review about her business. Correct. A year later. I mean, if you were really concerned about the pets, you would have written it immediately. So it was really a tit for tat. You Correct. Got tired? She wrote that review on my page, so I decided to write a true review about her page. Perfect. So did I get that all right? Good. A pox on both your houses. May I say something, please? Sure. So what she accused us of is illegal. Just a second. We have to keep sanitary con conditions, and we have How do to I, just a second. Her. How do I know that one of their drivers didn't report seeing feces in the pool? How do I know that? I've been there before and asked them why they didn't need water that currently week, you know, that they're going to need it, the 2,000 gallons on Wednesday like they normally do. And he said, we just had to get the dogs out just because we realized it was feces in there. They said it happens a few times a year. So okay. it was not a Whatever. statement. Whatever. It's their business, madam. 
just like this is your business. If you run a dirty place, I don't. That, know. That's the whole just thing. a second. My well, they, 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 well, they, where I'm well they don't run an irresponsible business. In your reviews, you're suggesting that they are irresponsible and also thieves because in one of your reviews, you say they were shorting us on water. Yes, they were. That's what you say. And you said it not only a year later, you said it during the course of the year. And it was their business. Their business is as important to them as yours is to you. So if you're going to weaponize the, these reviews, then you both deserve what you got. You're not supposed to do that. If you were legitimately concerned about the dogs, you would have reported it right away. What this was was tit for tat, so you deserve each other. Claim and counterclaim are dismissed. Goodbye. This court is adjourned. My thing was that they accused us of breaking the law, and it was totally untrue. My statements were true. Whether they were in the wrong or not, they were true statements, and hers were complete fabrication. I mean, we had been dealing with it for about a year and a half, so I was, I was just really shocked when I received the paperwork in the mail since I did delete the review since she did threaten to sue me, so I did delete it. Look at reviews, and if you can't find them, go somewhere else. I wanted both of us to be su successful businesses because we live in a small community and our businesses do not, you know, we're not in direct competition with each other. So I wish her well and I would hope she would wish, wish our business well. You know, people like me just learn to look at a restaurant and see what the reviews are. And you sort of assume that people of goodwill, if they're going to post something that's negative, it's because they had a negative experience. And I think it's such a shame that it's become a way to weaponize legitimate reviews where somebody, the plaintiff in this case, had absolutely no clue that the problem on Labor Day was her fault. Yeah. Yeah. She had a perfectly reasonable relationship with them for over a year. She said they paid him in advance. She never said anything about shorting water. It's just the power of the Internet. I mean, now, today, I know there are people that will cancel businesses for reasons completely unrelated to the business. But if you act out, you say the wrong thing, you display a negative character trait in public, people will go to your business's page, completely unrelated to anything in the business, and just flood the page. I'm talking thousands. They will get thousands of people to write bad reviews about a business, especially if something went viral, or if the owners of the business, if they were in a viral video that was not nice, you know, it's the power of the internet and cancel culture. Well, you know, the internet can be a tool for good and wonderful, or as we know, it can, be a very, it can be a very dark place. Yep. But it can't be a very dark place without mean-spirited or bad people. Yep. And there are mean-spirited and bad people. You know, I don't know how you protect yourself from something like that. I really don't know how you protect yourself. The consumer yourself has to be smart in reading the reviews and how much weight they're giving reviews. I like when businesses respond to especially the negative reviews. And sometimes they're funny because if the defendants had responded to the plaintiff's review publicly, you know, so people like you and I who were thinking about using them for water delivery could see it, they'd say, oh, interesting. We called twice and you weren't home <laughs> and you didn't have our money. That's the response. And so, so I like That's to see that because it calls out the person, person who left the negative review. But obviously there's downsides to a business. You don't want to get into a back and forth with every person that leaves a negative review. But sometimes when it's warranted, he responds you explain. To but the response isn't to post a negative exactly. review about you. Exactly. You're right. He's suing her ex-roommate, Adrian Carter for property damage, breaking a lease, and a dog attack. Court coming to order. All rise. Be seated, everyone. Hello, Judge. Case 2080, Baptiste versus Carter. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Baptiste, you and Ms. Carter were roommates. Yes, ma'am. From when to when? From October 7th to April 1st. Actually, May, May, May. And it is your claim that Ms. Carter vandalized certain property of yours. Yes, Your Honor. Most specifically, a very expensive couch. Yes, Your Honor. Because you had an argument, and that during the course of this argument, 
her dog bit you? Yes, Your Honor. And for breaching the lease, because yes, she left? Yes, sir. Okay, but it was a good thing that she left, right? Yes, sir. You were happy that she left. Her dog bit you. She vandalized right, the was, sofa. You were very happy very that happy she, she left. Yeah. You were very happy. So we're going to eliminate that breach of the lease part. No. no. Oh, yes. We're going to eliminate the breach of the lease part because you were happy that she left. I didn't want her to live in the same okay. situation as her, but being that the rent was so expensive, it wouldn't have been my best interest for her to leave. It's with her, to stay with her dog. I bit you. Right. I mean, I don't want you to sound ridiculous to me, okay? Right. All right, let's not sound ridiculous to me. Normal person, if they were bitten by their roommate's dog, and if their roommate vandalized their property, that roommate would be happy to see them go. But I'm not happy with the expensive rent well, by myself. Well, of course, but your choice would be staying with her and her dog that bit you. But if her name's I, on I, the I, lease... I, just a second. That's between her and the landlord. I just told you... I'm sticking with vandalizing and dog bite. So tell me when this dog bite took place. It's on March 29th. What kind of dog was it, by the way? It was a Belgian Mal Malama. What do they look like? It looks like a German Shepherd. Is that what you have, Miss Carter? A Belgian Yes, Your Mal Honor. Yes, Your Honor. A Belgian Malama, like a police dog. So it looks like a. German Shepherd? Yes, ma'am. So it's a large dog? Yes, ma'am. And when you moved in together, you moved in with the dog? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So tell me what happened March 29th. Okay. So before March 29th, Adrian and I got in a petty argument. It was dumb. We made up. In the argument, she confessed to me that... No, just a minute. You engaged in a petty argument, mm -hmm. and then you made up? Yes. And the petty argument was on what date? It was on the March 27th. And you made up? Yes. Okay. On the 27th, what were you arguing about? My dog tore up the carpet, and she sent this long paragraph, and we were just going back and forth, and we realized it was dumb, so we decided to drop it. And that's when she confessed to... On the 27th? Yes, ma'am. So you were arguing about the dog, and then on the 27th, after you were over the argument about the dog, is that what you're telling me? Be yes, very careful. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. She confessed that she gave the guy that I was seeing a lap dance. And? And I immediately cut all ties with her. So you cut all ties with her how? I stopped speaking to her. Even though you were roommates? Yes. Okay. Um, after uh, I stopped talking to her, social media posts were made. By whom? Adrian. Okay. Social media posts were made. Do you have those? No, I do not. Do you have those? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Why don't you have them if this is your case? They erase, but um, I have other things that I think you would want to see. I'm going in order. This is a case. So right. Don't try to creep into my mind. You've been saying your complaint a couple of days later. There were things posted mm -hmm. on social media. And is what you're telling me that they were erased? Right. I, I didn't save anything that she posted. Oh, never mind. I don't have to see anything. Correct? Correct. So you didn't save anything? No, ma'am. Then you have no okay. evidence of anything that happened so, late. So, uh, I saw that she had no remorse for what she did. Then I made social media posts. Adrian was mad that I made social media posts. So, the next morning, she's yelling at the top of her lungs at 10 in the morning. I wake up to see what she's yelling about. And she's just saying how I'm a... And I shouldn't have posted what I posted. And we were just arguing about the situation. And I asked, how could she do this to me? It was a very heated argument. She was yelling at the top of her lungs. I was yelling at the top of my lungs. During the argument, her dog is whoo, whoo, going crazy. And while we were arguing, we were pretty close. The dog bit me. And I said, you need to get your dog. She said, no, your dog is good. And we continued to argue. The dog came to bite me again. And that's when I uh, grabbed what was behind me, which was a paper towel holder. And I chucked it at the dog. So the dog bit you on the arm? Yes, ma'am. Twice. Okay. I would like to see a medical report on that. Okay. All right. I have a photo of the bite, uh, the antibiotics, and then this is the report. Would you show this to Miss Carter, please? Your okay. Honor, I know she has a video of the entire incident. If you rather, this it's is, not her this obligation is... to prove your case, as my law clerk so aptly told me in the last case. Not her obligation; it's your obligation. Okay. 
So, go ahead. After her dog bit me, I immediately grabbed my dog and I go to the hospital. I uh, filled what out What kind of dog do you have? I have a Doberman. Where was your Doberman when this was going he on? He was in the cage and he's still a baby as well. So I went to the hospital, got treated. While I was at the hospital, Adrienne uh, called the police and she said that I attacked her dog. Don't tell me what she said to the police unless you have a police report. Yes, ma'am, I have a police report. Then I'd like to see the police report. That's an official business record. So, this is the um, first police report for the dog bite. Okay, go ahead. All right, so April 19th, this day, Adrian knocked on my door. No, April 19th? We were at April 19th. Um, I thought we, you moved we, out on April 1st. No, she moved out on April 19th. So is what you're saying, after all this altercation, she moved out? Yes, ma'am. And stayed in the apartment with her dog from the 29th to April 19th? Yes, ma'am. And um, I, I went to a friend's house the day the dog bit me, and then I went home for a week, and then that's when I came back, and this second incident happened. So after the dog bit you, you did not go home. You took your dog and left. Yes, ma'am. And stayed at whose house for a week? I stayed at a friend that lives an hour away from my current apartment. On what day did you return? So I stayed one night at a friend's house, and then I returned, and then I went home for a week. So... When you went... Stop playing with papers. Yes, Your Honor. When you went home for the day, was the defendant at home? Yes, ma'am. Did you have any conversations with her? No, ma'am. Just stayed out of her way and packed a few things and left? Yes, ma'am. And you went to stay? At uh, home in Alabama. With your family? Yes, ma'am. Until things cooled down, basically. Okay. And when did you go back? I went back, I believe, April 17th. And what happened when you went back on the 17th? A few days later, April 19th, um, Adrian was knocking on my door at 9 a.m. in the morning saying that I need to come to the leasing office because there's a new roommate here. I told her no, and then that that's when she started threatening me and calling me all these kinds of names. So I take my dog again, I go outside, and I call an officer. And that's also when I call my mom, and she convinced me to go up there to speak with the new roommate to see, you know, who they what were. What new roommate? Just a second. She tried to get two young girls to replace her on the lease. And it was unsatisfactory. Yes, ma'am. So far, Correct. I have a dog bite. And... Yes, ma'am. Couch. So, after I said no to the two roommates, uh, one didn't have a job, they looked young, I said no, I went back home. Ten minutes later, Adrian... Home? Comes, you mean to your folks' To our house. apartment. Oh, to your apartment. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, ten minutes later, Adrian comes in. I was in the room with my door locked. I hear Adrian yelling, I hear her throwing things. She's saying, I can't believe you did that, you really just did that? I don't care, I'm still moving out, I'm still leaving, I'm not paying rent, blah, blah, blah. I didn't come out the room because last time it got crazy, so I just said I would let her do what she does and I will let the authorities handle it. She did come out the room, Your Honor. When I finally came out the room, which I have a video, and it came out, she had moved the, the couch in front of the door so I couldn't get out of my room. And Well, the, how did you get out? I jumped over it. And um, the trash can was flipped upside down. I have pictures of all the damage that she did to the house and videos. The, well, I'd like to see them, okay. please. And I would like to see the damage to the couch, which is your major complaint. Yeah. Okay, so this is the damages, and then I have a video of the entire incident right here. Want to tell me how that happened? I did put chips and items that wasn't wet on the couch out of anger. I shouldn't have did it, but I did do it. And I didn't put liquid on it or anything. Literally, you can... Don't speak. You had no right to even attempt to destroy it. At all. Later. So at that moment, I was like, you know what? I'll just do it myself so we can stop the confrontation. So then that's when the argument started, and he thought that I was kicking him out, which I never told him he couldn't come over, never told him he couldn't be a part of anything. It's a failed business venture where you it's both expect... not a business hey, venture. This is not, this is not a tea dance. Bra Batiste claims her ex-roommate, Adrian Carter, owes for couch damage and a dog attack. By the way, did you have any unreimbursed medical bills as a result of this dog bite? That's either a yes or a no. No, ma'am. 
When did you purchase this couch? I purchased it the day we moved in, so it was October 7th. How much did you pay for it? I paid 2200 in total, and Adrian and I were paying on it a little bit in the beginning, but there came a time where we had to make the final payment on it, which was 1200 When we had the argument, she didn't pay anything, so I had to pay it all by myself, and the couch is in my name. Did the couch remain? Um, yes, ma'am. The couch is at the house. What does it look like now? It's black, but there's a, um, it's an odor coming from the couch, and there's some stains on it. Do you have a picture of it, what it looks like uh, now? No, ma'am. I just have the pictures that I gave you. Okay, but you're still using the sofa. I... The answer it's is... It's a smell. It... No, ma'am. It, I don't sit on it anymore because of the smell. So why don't you get rid of it out of the apartment? I'm moving October 6th, and that's when I plan to get rid of it. But you've been using it since April. It's just been sitting a... there, Your Honor. I haven't well, had sitting time. in your apartment since April. Yes, ma'am. April, May. I just haven't made the time to get rid of it because I know I'm moving soon, and that's when I plan to get rid of it. I wouldn't keep something in my house that smelled. I work a lot, and I... Would you please show this to the defendant? Want to tell me how that happened? I did put chips and, like, items that wasn't wet on the couch out of anger. I shouldn't have did it, but I did do it. And I didn't put liquid on it or anything. Literally, you can... Don't speak. You can no. get a napkin and wipe it off. But that's my couch, too. Maybe I didn't pay the whole thing on it, but I've made payments on that couch, and I decided not to do that full payment that she did, which was $600, because she was irresponsible and decided to rent a couch and found out that that couch was whatever amount. I made payments on that couch, and I have proof for it. That's okay. You had no right to even attempt to destroy it. At all. At all. You had no right to do that. Right. Because that devalued the sofa. I agree. Okay, good. Okay. I'm actually finished with you. Your Honor, can we please go back over the lease portion of this? No. Can my mom speak about what happened? No, I said no. <sighs> when there's that kind of acrimony, I actually think that before somebody gets seriously injured, when you have two large dogs and two people with hot tempers that can do this, it's a very, very good thing that they no longer live together. Being stuck with a rent just, and... Just, just, I'll, I'll finish a second. I've just answered you. This is not a back and forth. Yes, sir. On the dog bite, I am awarding you $1,000. It looks as if part of it was a black and blue mark, certainly. I can't blame the dog for trying to protect its owner, but she's supposed to have control of her dog all the time. And she said, so, start I, I, this is not a tea dance. I'm not asking you anything. And I'm awarding you $1,200 for the sofa. That's $2,200. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're finished. Thank you very much. Court is adjourned. She just did something messed up, and I cut her off, and she didn't like it. I literally cut her off. She's just mad that she's cut off. She's delusional. She's delusional. She's childish. She's irresponsible, and I was just sick of dealing with someone draining. Just don't get roommates with your friends. Just move in by yourself. I'm happy. You had a question about the lease. I did. So I agree that it was best for the acrimonious situation for them to separate and not to live there. So I understand your judgment saying it was better for you. You got the good end of the stick on that, that she left. However, the law, if you breach a lease, she did get stuck with a higher portion of rent because her roommate, although a negative situation that should have probably ended right when it did, she was stuck paying her half as well. So I thought you should have at least heard her claim on the breach of a lease because then anyone could just say, oh, well, I don't like the situation and I feel like leaving would be a better thing and stick their roommate with their portion of the rent. And that's not what the law says. Well, that's true, except that this wasn't just a situation where parties weren't getting along. Mm -hmm. There's no question that she was nipped mm -hmm. by the defendant's dog. Well, I wouldn't want to stay in that situation anyway. Even. Well, that would give her the right, right to maybe leave without paying her half of the rent, rent, but that's not what happened. It's also sort of acknowledged that the defendant brought two other people to take over her piece of rent. And it was in the papers, and the plaintiff did not... She did say she, that she, she was the one that she, said no. She said, I don't want those two people. Well, then the onus really falls on her to mitigate her damages. Mm -hmm. And she had no proof that she went forward to try to get another roommate. Between the two of them, they may have had an agreement, but the dispute over rent really is the defendants and the landlords. Mm -hmm. She doesn't pay her rent, and if the plaintiff pays her half of the rent, the landlord is free to go against either or both of them. Sure, because both their names were on right the lease. Right in the lease. Understood. Case 2083, David versus Baroon. All parties, please step forward. Joseph David is suing his former friend, Jonathan Borum, for podcast equipment. Mr. David, 
Your claim that the defendant has acoustical equipment that you purchased for what looks to be a joint venture in Mr. Borum's music podcast. Yes, ma'am. You were making this music podcast in the basement of your house? Yes, Your Honor. Starting in what year? This year of March. And, Mr. David, you were friends. You knew each other, and you knew he was in this business. I don't know. What is your business? I deliver bread. I'm a bread vendor. What kind of interest do you have in music? Because that's what he was doing. Well, me and Jonathan have known each other for 20 years. Jonathan and, and I have known each other. Jonathan and I have known each other for 20 years, and he's always been in the music scene. He's an artist himself. A well, that's artist. what I gather. What about you? I was just a supportive friend in it. Okay, well, it clearly, you spent some money on music equipment, so it was more than being a supportive friend. If you were just being a supportive friend, then you made a gift to him of this music equipment. No, ma'am. You decided you wanted to be part of this music podcast. That's what you said. Correct. When did you make that decision? Sometime mid-June, after I had... June of this year? This year, correct. I had received a small amount of money, and I was able to... From where? A uh, settlement from, from an what? injury, car accident. How much did you receive? A little under 50 grand. And I seen an opportunity for me to invest and help out and help a friend and be able to invest into something that if we blew up one day, I could receive, you know, royalties from and money back in return. And well, we did had, you have a written agreement with we, him? We did not have a written agreement. Well, I'd like to know what the agreement was. So he was also in the car accident with me as well. And so he's got a settlement coming. He told me this was all verbal, that once he received that money, he would pay me back at least half of the equipment. So he would have a joint venture, and he would pay you for half the equipment you purchased? This was at the beginning, correct. Do you remember, Mr. Borum, that conversation? Uh, no, ma'am, Your Honor. Were you in the automobile accident with yes, him? Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. You did not receive a settlement. Is there any reason? You uh, we're still going through the court process. Okay, so you're going to trial. Actually, yeah, that's what it was set to go to trial, because I didn't get the offer that my lawyer put in. So it's going to trial on my side, but on his behalf... No, he's already it, settled his case. Yeah, mine's not settled yet. Okay. You indicate what you want is your equipment back. No, I'd like the money back. No, well, you get your equipment back. I, if it's yours. I, I want the money. I don't trust that he will give me the equipment back in good condition. Let me uh, explain this to you, Mr. David. If that's what you want, well, that's then not... I'm going to let you withdraw this case and go back to small claims court. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I'm going to dismiss your case without prejudice, which will allow you to go back to your small claims court, or do you wish to proceed with it today? I wish to proceed. Great. Why did you say, I'll do the editing myself? Because he was yelling at me, and I told him... What was he yelling at you? Because he said that the, the product wasn't up to par. He said, do... Just a second, Mr. Borum, this is your business. Right. Will you tell me, did you think the product was up to par? Joseph David claims his former friend, Jonathan Borum, is wrongfully keeping his podcast equipment. So, when you decided to enter this, according to you, agreement, that you would be in a joint venture, when he got his money, he would pay in his half of what the equipment costs, which you indicate, I think, is about $4,400. Correct. What I gather is there was a session set up that was supposed to take place in your basement. Yes, ma'am. And when was that? I believe it was around, like, early, early June, June-ish. Okay. And you have proof of the value of the equipment, I assume, Correct. and what exactly what equipment there is. Correct. Is there, Mr. Barm, a dispute about what equipment he purchased? Is there a dispute? Yes, Yes, because he has a receipt. I just want to know if I have to go into this. Well, on the on the receipt, we, we pur he purchased it on his card, but we're friends. We were going in together, so he bought it on his card because he had the money. Oh, just a second. Mm -hmm. I understand that, Mr. Oh, Borum. I'm that. asking I'm you whether there is an agreement as to what the mm -hmm. pieces he purchased on his card. Yes, ma'am. As, as far as the agreement, I, I'm not understanding the question. Okay. What pieces of equipment did he buy that's in your basement? Cameras. Camera. Cords. Cord. And probably the Black Magic. Black Magic? Black Magic, yes, ma'am. It's a device that works. Uh... Do you know what he's talking about? I do. Anything else that's down there that you purchased other than those three items? Yes, ma'am. In total... Watch. Look at me. Tell okay. me what In else. In total, there's two Panasonic cameras. Are there two cameras yes, that he purchased? Two cameras. Can I look down for... 
I, I can't hear you if you're mumbling. There's a uh, lighting, three lights. There's three lights. Did he purchase three lights? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Wireless mics. How many? Uh, There's a set of two. Did he purchase those? Yes, ma'am. And not to correct you, but we purchased those. No, you didn't pay for it. I gave him the money. Just, Just I a gave second. Him, I gave him cash. Oh, you did. Well, you're going to show me proof of that in a moment. Well, I don't have proof that I gave him cash. No, no, ma'am. Because we were friends, so. Uh, just a second. Okay. You have no proof? Never did he happened. give you cash? No, ma'am. He never gave me a dollar. Fine. Not a penny. Okay, not a let's dime. go. We have three lights, two mics. What else? Uh, HDMI cord. He has a cord. Black Magic ATEM. He has that. Picture. 256 gigabyte SD card. What is that? It was memory a, card. It's a $50 memory card. It still it adds up. Let's go. The card reader, 20-foot cables, a stencil and a table. Just a second. A stencil and a table. Describe that. It's for the logo that we made for the podcast. I purchased the stencil for the logo. How much did you pay for that? Between that and the table is 80 bucks. Let's stay with the big ticket item, sir, that's, Henry. I was, I was adding Great. everything. Okay. Are we finished with the list? Yes. Yep, that's all. Very good. How much did you pay for these things minus the 50-buck card? In total, show me. Minus the 50 bucks. Yeah. 43.50. Okay. And all of that is in your basement now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what happened, according to what I read, there was a music session scheduled. And at the time that there was a music session scheduled, your daughter had COVID. Yes, ma'am. She lives on top of the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how old is she? That was in July. She's 10 months now, so probably about eight months. Okay. And she's cared for by both you and your wife. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And I gather, Mr. David, that when you found out that there was COVID in the house, you didn't want to go into the basement. Correct. And that was sometime in June. Correct. Okay, can you tell me about that conversation? Well, he told me that she had COVID, and then he said that his fiance may possibly have it, and he may possibly have it. He even took off work, and I filled in for him at work for three days because he may have had COVID or not, and he said he wasn't Well, he feeling wasn't. He well. didn't want to go in and risk it. Correct. So I told him I do not want to continue with this interview. He said he would continue on. You mean the it. interview that was supposed to take place Correct. in the basement? Correct. How much after, Mr. David, did you find out that the infant had COVID? It and that Mr. Borum and his wife were both exposed. Was the video podcast supposed to be made in the basement? Two, three days. Is that correct, Mr. Borum? From anywhere between two to five days, ma'am. And when Mr. David told you he didn't feel comfortable coming into the house, what did you say to him? I said, okay, I would have someone else fill in his position because I understood why he didn't want to come over. Okay, and did you have someone fill in his position? Yes, ma'am. And then what happened, Mr. Borum? The episode got done and it wasn't up to par with Joseph's standards. So and? that's when the argument begun. Okay. And the argument was what? The argument was the guy didn't do it right. So it was a lot of bickering. So I told Joe, you know, I just do the editing myself. And he took that as I was cutting him out. Okay. So he was supposed to do the editing. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And why did you say I'll do the editing myself? Because he was yelling at me and I told him. What was he yelling at you? About? Because he said that the, the product wasn't up to par. He said, do. Just a second, Mr. Borum. This is your business. Right. Will you tell me? Did you think the product was up to par? I did, but I took. Did you? I, I, I thought it was up to par, but I took his recommendation because he, I brought him in for production. So I was like, okay, if you don't feel like it's up to par, let's figure it out. But then we kept going back and forth. So at that moment, I was like, you know what? I'll just do it myself so we can stop the confrontation because you didn't want to tell the guy what he did wrong. So then that's when the argument started, and he thought that I was kicking him out, which I never told him he couldn't come over, never told him he couldn't be a part of anything. I just told him I wasn't going back and forth because that's why I brought you in okay. for that. May I see the credit card statement from the purchase of this equipment? And Mr. Borum, I want to see where you took out $2,200 from in cash. I want to see where you took. You I said you I paid him pay half. I didn't pay half. Well, what'd small. you pay? I never, I never stated that Just I paid half. If your partner's, that's what you have to pay. How much did you give him? Uh, I gave him money here and there, like on oh, all no. the... That, I, doesn't help. No. that doesn't help me, oh. sir. That doesn't help me. These are bank statements. I, bank I didn't think what? I had to keep a record if we was best friends for 15 years. That's just... We I, I can't help you, sir. Just... I can't help you if you say you paid a little bit here and there. I can't help you with that. You never gave so, me a dime. So, so when okay. you state that if you're a friend, you're doing this to help me out as a gift for what I got going never on. Never a gift. And then you try to bring it and take it back from Mr. me. Mr. Borum, how many podcasts have you made since June? Since June? Yeah. I think, I believe we on episode... Uh, 15, 16, something like that. 15, 16. Successfully. Yes, ma'am. And you intend to do this for profit? Yes, ma'am. Have you so far seen any profit? Uh, not, not as now, because you know you gotta, you gotta build up. Just a second. So not as of yet. Yes, ma'am. Do you work? Yes, ma'am. Does your wife work? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay, so you have two incomes in the house. Right, right. And this is a side job for you. Correct. But you have to buy your own equipment because he's coming to get his equipment. That's going to be the court's order. So if it's I his already, equipment. I already it's had his. Equipment. It's his equipment. The equipment so he, that he. So he it to me. That's what. That's what he told me he was doing because we're friends. Just, you know, and he appreciated what I was this doing. This is why we're here. Right. And now I heard you, and I heard him, and now I'm ruling. I am making an order that he, within five days of today, with a marshal or a sheriff, will come and pick up his equipment. So you I think, I, I he's just, giving him my equipment back. Um, no, what I'm I got giving going him on. his equipment back. But he never used it, though. I don't care whether he used it or not. It was a failed business venture where you it's both expect. A, it's not a hey, business venture. This is not. This is not a tea dance. He's getting back his equipment. You and your wife have a side business going. Go buy equipment. Do you understand? There's Five much. days, wait outside. You'll get a copy of my order. You can go get your equipment. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. A 15 year friendship, obviously, it don't matter. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, you see the real person in somebody. That's all, that's all I can say. You could be friends with somebody 100 years, and they're going to change. Yeah, I mean, I thought I had a good friend for a while, but really. Man, the show going to go on, man. Yeah, y'all know. Make sure y'all watch. Tune in. in. I was just tolerating a really bad person. I've had understandings with my friends similar to what the plaintiff and defendant has. One of my friends will stay in my apartment from time to time for a few nights, and I always make sure, because you never want a holdover tenant or a friend staying longer than you had anticipated, and I'll text and I'll say, okay, you're good to stay there Thursday and Friday night. Let me know if there's any problems, but you got to be gone by 9 a.m. on Saturday. Just to memorialize the understanding that I think I have, even with friends, it's just always smart to have some sort of record of a business, an understanding, a trade-off. Yeah. I just think that it's good practice to, even if it's just a text, something to memorialize what you believe the understanding to be. I agree with you. Yeah. And that would make my job easy, but yep. would eliminate this TV program. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> ...her ex-boyfriend's brother, Cleefers McCowan Jr., for personal property and filing a false police report. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2143, Simpsons versus McCowan Jr. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Simpson, you lived with Mr. McGowan for looks like seven years, is what you said. Yeah, yes, ma'am. It was off and on. What do you mean off and on? Well, I had another residence as well. Okay. And it's gonna get more complicated, I see, <laughs> than less complicated. You lived off and on, according now, according to you, with the defendant's brother, who is now deceased. Yeah. It is your claim at one point in your papers that you and the defendant's brother were married. Yes, ma'am. He passed away. Yes, ma'am. And it is your claim that the defendant owes you money. He was the executor of the estate, and he owes you money for property that he took from the house and for filing a false police report against you, I assume indicating that you took things from the house. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. McGowan says that you and his brother were never married. While he indicates in his papers there might have been some sort of ceremony yes. of marriage, yes. that his brother somehow must have told him that he never filed the marriage license, so the marriage was never valid. That's correct. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Well, let's go to that for a moment. Yes, it's sort of curious and takes me back to law school days. And believe me, that really tests my memory. Were you at the ceremony where your brother married the plaintiff? No, ma'am, I was not. When did your brother tell you that there was a marriage ceremony? I probably heard it uh, just throughout life. You mean throughout life for how long? From the time that he had any dealings with her. So about seven years ago? Um... Yes, ma'am. So you asked your brother whether he was married? Yes. How long ago was this? I would say four years ago. Okay. So four years ago, you say to your brother, I understand that you, what's your first name? Mona. Mona, Mona. got married. Well, so he gave me an insurance document, and I was like, wow, what's going on? What's, what's, what about all this? He gave you an insurance document that uh, said from, what? From the VA indicating that I was the going to be the um, person that gets the money upon if he he demise. If he died, right, and you had an, a VA insurance policy yes, with you as the beneficiary. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and so he showed you the insurance policy. Well, he sent it to me in the mail. Okay, a, and? Or email or uh, electronic, and so I said, wow, what's going on? So then I started to ask different questions, and he said, well, don't 
worry about that. We're not legally married. No, you have to tell me. I said to him... I, I said to him, so... Doesn't your wife... Get, Isn't she get, the get, beneficiary? Get this? I don't want to be involved in all this. Right. And he said, I am not married. We went through a ceremony, and you have 10 okay. days to file the... Marriage license. The, the marriage license in Las Vegas. Okay. Uh, to, to solidify the marriage. Mar and and then he said, I never filed it. We are not married. May I? Did your, just a second. Did your brother tell you that he had ever told Ms. Simpson that he never filed the marriage license? No, we never had that conversation. Okay. Well, because you say in your answer, sir, that my brother was too smart for that. He never mailed in the license. Well, he, he told me because there was a, a problem between these two. And so we talked about that, and he said, no, I'm not, I'm not married to her. And he said, you have to file the document, and I never filed the document. And I have a copy of that right here. Ms. Simpson, yes, tell me when this ceremony took place in Las Vegas. April 2013. Did you travel there with Mr. McGowan? Yes, ma'am. We moved to Vegas together. Who was at the ceremony? It was no ceremony. What happened was we... I don't know what this is. What happened was we went to the Justice of the Peace. And the 10 days is not acronym. No, 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 don't... I don't apologize. Tell me, don't tell me. We had one year to go to, like, a pastor or minister or something like that because we just went to the Justice of the Peace. In Vegas, they give you a year to do it, whereas it's... I guess with the, what I think the term is officiant or something, officiant has to do it so you can become married permanently. So you knew that you were not legally married? Well, it was legal, but it would be official if you don't do another step within a year. And I understand was, that, but okay. you never did the other step. We didn't only because so, he was sick, ma'am. I don't care what the reason I was. I don't care if he was watching Yellowstone yes, or Please. because it doesn't matter why. I respect that. What? You can get hooked on that. No, oh, yeah. I understand. So no, I don't and that, care what the reason right. is. You knew that your marriage, because it wasn't confirmed, according to you, within yes, a year, that you weren't legally married. Yes, ma'am. And that Okay, was... just a second. That's okay. all I want to know. That makes my life much easier. Okay. Because, Mr. McGowan, I, I want you to listen to me very carefully. Under what you told me, under the events that you told me, you see, you should have kept your mouth shut. No, it's okay. Uh, no, 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 no. It's going to be... Uh, Okay, in the end, it's going to make a lot of sense in the end. No, I understand that it's going oh. to make a lot of sense to me. We're going to follow the money. But I just want to tell you and the people who are watching this that when I thought about your answer, that you said your brother was too smart and didn't file the necessary document within 10 days, my view of that scenario was that she could still consider herself his wife. Because if he fraudulently, in an attempt to deceive her, didn't mail the marriage license in, she would be the beneficiary. I'm just letting you know that. You understand what I just said? Yes, sir. Because he committed a fraud on her. He would have committed a fraud, your brother, on her into leading her to believe that they were a married couple and they had the responsibilities and the benefits of a married couple. But she says... <laughs> She volunteered that she knew they weren't married. Yeah. So I don't even have to address that. And it's okay. Just, just a honor. second. I know where I'm coming from. Okay. So Mr. McGowan, the person that you were involved in for a period of years, on and off, you had your own place, but he was ill for a certain period of time. Was your brother ill? No, ma'am. No. Just a second. He says no. You say he was ill for a great portion when of I that first time. Met Shh. Him. Just a second. For a great portion of that time, and that. You were his caregiver. Yes, ma'am. And you were paid as his caregiver by the government. The VA, yes, ma'am. By the VA to be his caregiver. Yes, ma'am. Well, that would be inconsistent with being his wife, to be his caregiver. Because if you're a wife, you don't get benefits from the VA. If you are a non-relative and caring for somebody who requires assistance, you may get assistance. And how much was the VA... Just answer my question. Yes, this is not my first rodeo. <laughs> okay, I understand. How much was the VA paying you a month to take care of... What was your brother's first name? Marcus. How much were you being paid to take care of Marcus? Because you say that one check you didn't get because of him. It's part of your lawsuit, so you know exactly how much you yes, were paid. How much? 
$2,057.55. A month? Yes, And when did you start collecting that? 2014. Woo! You are a legal stranger. So you must have filled out forms to say that you were married. No, I was considered a family member. I was no longer considered the wife, but I was considered... Well, you're not no longer. You were never his wife. Ramona Simpson claims her ex-boyfriend's brother, Cleefers McCowan Jr., threw out her personal belongings. Cleefers is countersuing for damage and stolen property. Okay, so there was a reason why you didn't continue to solemnize the marriage ceremony that you went through in 2013 because you started to collect $2,000 a month from the VA in 2014 that you couldn't have collected were you his wife. That's a yes. No, it isn't, ma'am. Oh. The, what, receiving the benefits from the VA, you have to be a family member. You have to be related to that person in order to get this stipend pay. It wasn't a regular VA payment, and it's for relatives. You have to be a relative for that veteran. What are you getting? Oh, just as, Yes, it's true. Just as, check that, Pull Sarah. Pull stipend yeah. pay for the VA, because we're both disabled veterans. It's not like I just had to do this. I loved him, and I care for him, and he was sick the day I met him. Just a minute, you both disabled veterans? Well, my, my disability is not as, was not as crucial, is not as crucial as his, his How was. much do you he, collect? I, I, very minimum, because Which I, I asked your question, that's a very minimum, yes. it's not a number. Yes, it's $300 and some change. But the thing is, Your Honor, may I, may I speak, please? He was sick from the day that I met him, and I was taking care of him prior for that. This was his idea because he was familiar with the veterans and the system. This was his idea that we can receive funds, and it stayed right in the household. We were living together. It was stayed in the household, and that's okay Just with I them. thought you told me a moment ago that you had your own place. No, 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 not then, ma'am. Not then, when we moved well, back we... from Vegas, because we stayed in Vegas for approximately three years. When we moved back from Vegas, he had purchased a home and everything, and it was supposed to be okay. We were going to be together, but he started living another uh, alternate life, which he was very familiar with because he's introduced him to so many people. I don't even care about that. I still continue to take care of Marcus. It was no longer a romantic Just a second. situation. Now you still continue. You had your own place. We, I live both places because he needed me more there than he did when he, we was living together. What actually. kind of alternative lifestyle was he doing that he needed you no, there well, part time? No, well, he was seeing other, seeing other people. Other, and he stuff was seeing like women. Pardon me? He was seeing other women. He was seeing other people, yes, okay. ma'am. Okay, so he was seeing other people. So but you... Let me finish. Yes, ma'am. But you continued to receive the $2,057. You knew you weren't married. That money was coming directly to you. It wasn't coming to him. Well... It was coming to you at what address? He was giving me a portion from his bank account, and then when we discontinued every, everything, there was nothing physical, then I was receiving my full allotment at that point, but I was still taking care of him, taking him to the VA, taking him to the hospital. Wait just a second. I don't care. Don't go like this and like this. He's a legal stranger to you, and you're getting $2,000 no, a month he to take not. him to the VA. Ma'am, he was not a legal stranger. Just a, he was a legal stranger to you. Legal. He was not your mother, father, brother, sister, or husband. Ma'am, he was a dear friend of oh, me. He okay. continued okay. to be a okay. friend, honestly. Okay. Well, he's... And he knows that. We went to several I'm, places I'm together. I'm setting up for myself what yeah. is the actuality of the situation. Now, I understand that I was really not prepared for this scenario. I was prepared for somebody, quite frankly, Miss Simpson, who had been defrauded by his deceased brother and into I believing... And we'll get to that. Shh, into believing they were married. She took care of him when he was sick. And all of a sudden, now that he's deceased, his brother comes in, kicks her out of the house, and takes all of his property. That's the scenario. But That's now scenario. I understand that that is not the case, that you knew you weren't married, that for eight years you collected $2,000 a month for taking him to the doctor's offices, to the vet, to taking care of him in the house, but you understood that he was seeing other people, that you didn't have an exclusive relationship. Now I understand it. And you did receive a certain benefit from that because when you moved back from Vegas, you went to your own place because he was having an alternative life well, that had nothing to do with you. At that point, was the money going to his bank account or yours? It was Just... going to his bank account, ma'am. Okay. Well, you say that he notified the government 
part of your lawsuit is for one month's check that you say, or two months yeah, that you yeah. didn't get. And you say you didn't get it because he notified the VA or somebody notified I the did. VA. I don't care who notified the VA. What I want to know is, with those checks immediately preceding Mr. McGowan's death, going into his bank account or yours, that it, he had? His. It was going into Marcus's bank account. Okay, and he was giving you money from that bank account? Prior to his death, yes, ma'am. Right up to the time he got sick and died? Yeah. Okay, yes, and how much would he give you? He would have given me $2,057. Okay. 2000 All right. No, okay, you now, mean total? No, I'm sorry. No, no. I get it. It was not what I thought, yeah, but, but I get it. Ma'am, may I Okay, please money owed something? for the return of property. What property? The property, which is my funds. I have jewelry that was missing and clothing that I never received because he kicked out his niece and boarded up the house. Just a second. Was your brother taken to the hospital? Yes, ma'am. On what date? 28th of, uh, 28th of August, 2021. Okay. He was nowhere and to be found. Just what? He wasn't around. Just a second. I did that. Just a second. Did you take him to the hospital? I had his daughter to call an ambulance. I got to Marcus' house and I followed him to the no, no. hospital. Yes, ma'am. Hey, well, you want to just answer my question? I actually understand the whole scenario. You understand yes, that? That I do understand the, the money part. I get it. So when you say his daughter called the ambulance and you got over there, you got over there from your house? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And who do you live with there? My daughter and my son. And in whose name is the lease? My daughters, my son, and myself. So all three are on the lease? Yes, ma'am. And how long have you had a lease at that address? 2017. Okay. So we're talking about five years that you've had an alternative address. You have an answer for me? There is a Veterans Affairs Program of Comprehensive Assistance for Family Caregivers. It says $2,800 a month, but based on a fee schedule that can change, so the 2057 fits within the and range. And does it define family members? It doesn't, it doesn't define the family caregiver, only that the VA may appoint someone who's part of the primary family caregivers to the veteran, but it doesn't identify who qualifies as, as family, a family caregiver. As a family caregiver. And that's the act that you were under. But yes, you were not a member of his family. Yes, ma'am. You were not a member of his family. Well, the, it not goes a well. Than that. Not well, a well. This is not a well. You're living with your daughter, your son, on a lease since 2017. You know he's got an alternative lifestyle that has absolutely nothing to do with you. He was giving you the two thousand dollars a month. I don't know why. I don't even have to get into right, that. But you were not. That individual, but you were not a family member. If this is for family, it does go toward to the veteran to then give the family caregiver though. Okay, but. You are a legal stranger to him. So you must have filled out forms to say that you were married. No. It's up to that... Mar it's up to that individual, the veteran. And I'm, I know how the procedure goes. It's up to that individual. I was considered a family S member. I was no longer considered the wife, but I was considered... Well, you're not no longer. You yeah. were never his wife. So I'm if okay. he filled out a I'm form... I'm okay and with that, ma'am, okay. because I could have... Okay, so he had further. the right... You were never his wife. He had the right to board up the house, whichever it is, and you weren't living there for five years. You had a place... So if you had clothes there and your jewelry... What were your clothes and your jewelry there? Because if he was I fooling could've... around with other women, why would you leave your clothes and your jewelry in the house? Okay, ma'am, the thing is, the, no, no one has came to the home as another woman in that home. I was always there... He has no proof or evidence that I was not there. So, basically, I had their clothes there because I stayed okay, there. I forget, lived there. Forget it. You were more than compensated with $2,000 a month. What's next? I don't believe that you leave any valuable jewelry at his house. I was there most I'm, of the time, I, well, honestly. You don't need valuable jewelry if you're taking care of a sick person. Ramona Simpson is accusing defendant Cleefers McCowan Jr. of throwing out her personal belongings. Okay. Do you have any of her property? No, no, ma'am. Did you dispose of any of her property? I, I didn't. She had no property Just there. Just a second. I don't believe she had any property there either, anything of value. And I did... Okay. Can I... Can I Excuse uh, me. I did find what the VA considers a caregiver. So if you're a spouse, son, daughter, parent, step-family member, or extended family member of a veteran or if you live full-time with them, or if you're willing to live full-time with them if they designate you as the family caregiver. 
so technically if you're willing to live with the veteran full-time you could be qualified as a family caregiver but it's up to the veteran to declare their own family caregiver, caregiver if you live there full-time yeah yeah but she stated if you were willing to and i was always willing to okay and because good. Good. Okay. i'm not i don't feel as if you were shortchanged madam at all and i don't believe that you had anything of value in in the house so your case is dismissed now we're going to get to the second part of your claim you say she took property from the house yes ma'am what property she took jewelry guns what jewelry uh, what? chains rings cufflinks show me and Tire, Show me. Uh, how, I, how am I going to? How am I going to figure that out? You have photographs of things. Yes, I have you... some photographs here. This is so sad. So sad. You have to put a period and end it. He had a good thing going for nine years. Ma'am, the money was paid in the arrears, first of all. So me not getting paid for, and this is really not a big issue to me. What he's saying because they're all lies, and I'll tell you the truth. Just say, I'm, not, was, not, I'm not okay. saying. I'm not saying anything, madam. Here's all the, okay. I'm saying is, you have no case because i don't believe that somebody who lived in a lifestyle yeah, as you've described you have you witness, as views described to me which is you have your own home where you're on a lease since 2017 where you said to me he had an alternative lifestyle but i still took him to his va appointments i took him I and i was his caregiver that. but i lived with my daughter and my son, I don't believe that you leave any valuable jewelry at his house. I was there most I'm, of the time, I, well, honestly. You don't need valuable jewelry if you're taking care of a sick person. But Can we, I see? I state I've, I've, also I've, friends, I've, I've, yeah. I've decided your case. I respect that. This is just what had happened to looking for everything that was taken in there. The... I don't care. Who cares? What are you showing me? You're showing me that the place is a mess, that somebody went through it? Yeah, I'm showing you what... I don't what... care. Okay. I don't care. Prior to his death, when had you seen your brother last? I had seen him about five days prior to that. You live close by? I was living in San Diego at the time. And he lived in Highland, which is 89, it's 79 miles up the 15 freeway. Okay. So five days prior. Prior to the five days prior that you saw your brother... When had you seen him before? I, we see each other quite frequently. We have family, barbecues, this, that, and the other. I'm retired. I, I go. Okay, would you return these to him? These don't show me any jewelry. Okay. It shows me that the house was looked like it was picked through. Okay. Thank you. What else? So, quite That's frequently. It. That's it. Did you get a VA benefit? from your brother for his insurance from policy? uh the life insurance policy. yeah that's from the va yes ma'am and how much did you receive twenty six hundred dollars who paid for his funeral i did how much was that uh eleven or twelve hundred so you took some of the insurance money and paid for it yes did he have any other valuable asset he had quite a bit of stuff quite we're in uh it's in probate as we speak oh so this is case is in probate it's now. in probate right now as oh. we speak oh Great, so I don't have to deal with it. Your case is dismissed. We're done. Thank you. This court is adjourned. You know what? I have a lot of respect for the judge, but she didn't listen to me. Well, I'm, I'm happy that the judge made the decision that she made. He's a habitual liar. Thief. My brother died and within a half a day went over and burglarized the house. This is something that he can laugh about and he's going to go and tell the whole world that I'm still a liar. I'm still a this, that, and the other. There is quite a bit of uh, items that belong to me that this person stole. That you can love someone and not be married to them. You can help someone and not be married to them and, and making love to them. I was genuinely there to help Marcus because I love Marcus. The devil, I don't, I don't want the devil, you know, who, the devil. He barred me from the funeral. Not, I, I didn't fight it because the respect I have for his family and for Marcus. I could have went there, uh, no. I said, you know what, I won't be there. I hope that she crawls back in the rat hole she came out of and does whatever she does. You know what was interesting in that case, Sarah? When I read the complaint and the answer, I had a whole different vision. Yeah, me too of what the arrangement was. And based upon what the defendant wrote in his answer, that his brother, with regard to the marriage, mm -hmm. to his brother telling him, I'm too smart, I didn't mail in the papers. Mm -hmm. Read like fraud a little bit. Right. That but she was in on it. She knew. 
She didn't complete she, the steps. She didn't she complete knew. the steps for a different reason, sure. but she knew that they weren't legally married. They were th that they weren't legally Which married. Which changes the whole game from a legal perspective. Right. Certainly the fact that it's the case is currently in probate made my life a, little easier. A, a lot easier. Anyway, it should be a warning signal when you get married out there, folks, and you have a marriage license, because I performed enough weddings mm -hmm. to know you have to seal it, yep. sign it, put a stamp on it, and usually put it in the mail within three days of the ceremony. Mm -hmm. So, brides and grooms, <laughs> make sure you put it in the mail together <laughs> or watch the officiant put it in the mail. John Wheat is suing vet assistants, Heather Schilling and Hannah Hensley for damages from an assault. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2122, Wheat, Schilling, Hensley. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Wheat, it is your claim that the defendants assaulted you. Yes, Your Honor. And this is what I gather from reading your complaint. On August 10th of this year, your cat was injured. How was your cat injured? That I don't know. The morning of the August the 10th, I had let him outside. When he came back in, he was acting peculiar. I picked him up and noticed that he had two long, deep gashes on his, between his chest and his stomach. At what time was this? Approximately 10.45, 10.30. The defendants work at the vet where you have taken the cat before. Not this particular cat. I have three cats total, and I had good service from them, so... So I, you... Naturally, I went back. They work at a vet where you had taken an animal, maybe not this one, before. Correct. So at that time, you put the cat in the car and drove over to where the vet's office is. Yes. And during that time, they had a COVID protocol in the vet's office. And the protocol, I assume, correct me if I'm wrong, because I know I've taken my pets to the vet during COVID, you get to the parking lot, you call, they come out, they check in the animal and what's wrong, and then they come out when someone is ready to see the animal, they bring them inside. You do not come into the office. Is that your protocol? Correct. Is that your COVID protocol? Well, it was in a couple of vets where I took our dogs. Were you aware of that protocol? No, Your Honor, not at all. So tell me, what happened when you got to the vet's office? Is there a parking lot? There is. I, I, uh, there was one other vehicle there. It was pulled up in the front of the door, the very first spot. The papers indicate that there is a chart or a video of the parking lot. Is that correct? We drew a diagram that they based that on. Okay. So that would be a fair representation, um, sir, of the vet clinic, and there are parking spaces in front of it? I believe so, yes. Where did you park? My, yes, please. My, my car, I'm assuming at, at this point, the main door is approximately over here. Okay. There was the vehicle that I was mentioning is parked here, and I was parked here. Okay, but you were parked right in front. Yes. Okay, is that right? Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay, so what happened when you got there? Well, I, I walked around the back of the car, got the cat out. He was in the passenger seat in the cat carrier. And I went immediately up to the door, and I don't know the defendant's names, but the, the younger of the two, she was already out front with a... You mean the young lady in the blue sweater? Yes. Is that who you're talking about? Yes, you're looking Your over there. What is your last name? Hensley. Miss Hensley. She was already outside with a, uh, a customer at Your that Honor, point. Your Honor, that was... Shh, it wasn't don't, me. don't, don't speak. Okay, so you say Miss Hensley was already outside well, with another patient. I thought it was Miss Hensley. It could have been another lady okay. that worked there, but it, it was similar in youth and... Okay, so somebody came out and was talking to they, another... They patient. were already there, and so they stopped me. I was proceeding up to the door, and, and I, like I say, I have pictures of the, the signage that they have. So you can't read the signage until you get right up on top of it. Okay, so you went to the door, and what happened? I went to go in, and I was stopped. By whom? The lady that was outside. Okay. And the person who was outside stopped you? And said that you couldn't go in, so I stopped. I told him that it was an emergency, that my cat was injured. You told the, the lady, lady outside? The lady that was outside, absolutely. Told him that, it, that he was injured and that he needed to see somebody immediately, the vet. And uh, they suggested that I needed to call, and I couldn't understand it because I was already there. I said, can't you just go inside and let him know that I was here? Uh, that seemed reasonable to me. What they told you was to get back into your car with the no. cat and call the... No. Or just call? Just call. So I said... So well, she was talking to the person 
who I assume was a female, because you say Miss Hensley, Miss Hensley or someone resembling her, they were taking care of another patient that was outside. Yeah, when they stopped me before they I got... St- and said, stop. Correct. Call, right? Correct. And you were upset, and you said, well, why can't you just go inside and tell them that I'm here? Yeah, they, Because she I, was with somebody else. Well, it, it appeared to me that they were done... Okay, I don't care but but, what appeared to you. She was outside with somebody else. She told you to call. What happened next? Well, I I set the cat down, and I actually sat on the concrete and waited. That person had... Waited for what? That person left. As soon as they got done talking with me, they went into the building. So, and I waited about five minutes. And then, uh, I guess it was Miss Hensley now, she came out and asked me now if I had an appointment, my cat's name. I said no. And I told her, I, I said, no, it was an emergency. And then, and then she told me at that time that there was no vet on duty. And so then that's when I, I got up. I was upset. I said that I needed to leave. I did use an explicitive. What did you say? Well, I said that I needed to get the father there so I could get some help. Okay. And, and then I, was, I picked up my cat and the carrier, and I was proceeding to leave. And? That's when the other plaintiff... Miss Schilling other came, out. came out. And... She confronted me, and she started into a huge rant about how she wasn't going to stand there and listen to this or whatever. Were you shouting at Miss Hensley? No, no. No. She told you that there was, there was no vet on duty. Right. And I... you got up, and you said, I'm going to get the whip out of here. Correct. That's it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. the fact that I had waited okay. five minutes, I was, you know, it was upsetting. So then uh, when uh, she Ms. came Ms. Schilling out, came out, and... She started into a huge rant... What, what, what did she say? Rent is a conclusion. Uh, what did she say? Well, she was had her voice raised. She was she was shouting at me. What did she say? She said that she wasn't going to stand there and let me say things to this other woman. So then I just looked at her and I told her basically to shut up. So um, is that what you said to her? I told her to shut up. Okay, so you again used an expletive. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there was no reason for. She her. said. Okay. I'm just asking you what happened. Yes. So you told her to shut up. I did. And? That's when she came over. She was probably about three foot away, and she stepped right over into me, and she put her body on mine. So she stepped right into me, pushed me back with her body, and she told me, I'm not afraid of you, I'm not intimidated by you. And I told her, don't touch me, get off of me. And I told her twice, and she never moved. I put my cat down. And I moved her off of me. What do you mean, I... I just... I pushed her back you, off of me. You put your hands on her. She was already on me. How was she on you, sir? What was she... What physical part of the her defendant... Chest, her chest, her entire body was leaning on me at that point. Mm-hmm. She body-checked me. I'd like you to go over there and show me where Miss Schilling came out and where the three of you were standing. Okay. I have pictures as well. Okay. So here being the front door. Yeah, right. And, and here was the box where I was sitting. When I picked up the cat, I moved over to here. When she came out the door, she was approximately here. And then she moved over to me and put her body on mine. If when Miss Hensley came out and told you there was no vet, why didn't you just get into your car? I was leaving. Well, when she came out, why didn't you just go into your car? No, no, the the first lady that I encountered never told me there was no vet. No, no, no. I understand that. When Miss Hensley came out and told you there was no vet, why didn't you just get into your car? I was leaving. I had picked up my cat and literally was walking away. I had walked from here to approximately here. In that meantime, she came out, and I had my back to her at first, and she started to yell. No, he wasn't. He was yelling in my face. Just a second. I'm going to let you have... A turn. As soon as he's finished. Go ahead. She started to yell at me, and that's when I told her. Okay. Go back. Thank you. And then what happened? So now you... Now she put her body on you. You put both hands on her and pushed her back. To push her off me. And then what happened? Then she struck me. How did she strike you? With her open hand. Where did she strike you? On my face. Okay. When you pushed her, she slapped you. She did. And next? And then the other one slapped me. She reached over her shoulder and slapped me. Okay, on the face. On the face. And then? And then we started to argue, and it was just yelling back and forth. And then the gentleman came out of the vehicle that was parked in that first spot, 
and he kind of diffused the engagement. And that's when she told me, just leave, leave. I felt safe enough to turn at that point. And I went and put my cat back in the car. And that's when the lady in the blue ran behind my car, said, don't let him leave, don't let him leave. Ran behind my car and placed her body on my car. And? And then that's when I told her, I said, you can't keep me, you can't detain me here. I'm going to take my cat to some place where I can get him some medical. And I moved her away from my car. How did you move her away? With my hands. So you... Open hands. Okay. That's when she turned and struck me with her fist, broke my glasses, gave me a black eye. I was defending myself at that point. I had my hands up. She was, I'm all cut up on this. And then that's when I finally grabbed her by her hair and pulled her off of me. Which one did you grab by the hair? The brunette. What was he saying to you? Sorry, it's a lot. We're living it. <laughs> he started screaming in my face, and I don't even remember. I'm so sorry. I don't remember exactly what he was saying. It was really scary. That's all I know. <laughs>
Okay, he sort of acknowledges that he was angry. Then what happened? I'm sorry, it's a lot. We're living it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, he started screaming in my face that we weren't helping and that he would be leaving, but he just was still screaming in my face. And I don't even remember, I'm so sorry. I don't remember exactly what he was saying. Just take a minute. It was really scary, that's all I know. <laughs> and I told him that he needed to leave and he wasn't, and that's when Heather finally came out and told him that he needed to leave. He got, she got in between us and was like, sir, you need to leave now. And she just kept saying, you need to leave now. And he kept screaming in our faces and she was like, I'm not gonna have you screaming at my girls. That's what he's referring to when she got into his face. She said, she did step into his face to push him away because he needed to leave. And she said, you're not gonna be screaming at my girls. He still was being belligerent not leaving. <laughs> and at that point, that's when he spit in my face, and that's what caused me to shove him. And then so he grabbed when you said, so we'll stop for a second, you came outside because you heard an altercation outside. Yes. Tell me what happened when you came outside. So I did come at them. I stood in between the two of them, and I told him he needed to leave. He needed to leave now. Um, I told him I was not going to have him talking to my girls like that. That wasn't appropriate. He needed to leave. And he was still shouting, and then that's when he spit in my face. And then I, I did push him away to get back from me, and he stepped forward. I did smack him with an open hand, and then he pushed me. And what he's leaving out is he actually grabbed my scrub top, and he was pulling on my scrub top, and that's why Hannah had stepped back in. She tried to get his arm off, which probably is where the scratches came from, and he grabbed her scrub top at the same time. So there was more contact than... Where was the cat? Uh, the cat was actually behind me. He had left the cat there. Sounds like a little bit more, Mr. Wheat, than what you told me in no, your they're narrative. Lying. They're lying. First off, she said that when she just admitted to the fact that she told me that I needed to call, and that's what the first thing I said when I came and pulled up is that the person that I met outside at the very beginning no, told me that I needed to call. Yes. And she just said that she told me I needed to call. There would have been no reason for the second person to come out and tell me that I needed to call. At that point, they came out and told me, asked me if I had an appointment, and I said no, that it was an emergency. And I had my cat the entire time with me until I put him down in order to push her off of me. That's the only time I put my cat down, and he was next to me the whole time. I would not have left my cat between her and me. Mr. Wheat, these people have been in business for a very long time. Is it just possible, sir, that because of the circumstances, and you were there with a cat who was bleeding out, that you were high energy and maybe not totally composed. Mm. I mean, I have two people who work here, at least one who's worked for the same vet for 10 years. You've used this vet before. Yeah. You haven't had problem with this vet before, and she's been there 10 years. And I assume that, at least she tells me, she's never had an incident like this before. So I can actually imagine, you know, I'm trying to put myself here. Somebody comes out and says to you, we don't have a vet on duty, which you probably didn't believe at the moment. No, I did. Well, if you believed that there was no vet on duty, why didn't you just walk into your car? Why did you say anything to her? Why did you use an expletive? Why was I, there I, any need to have any communication I, at all with I, her? I, I, if there's I, no vet here, okay, I better get my animal to... Well, Your Honor, when I, when I first pulled in and I, and I had that conversation with whoever that worked there, and I'll use that term loosely, whoever, they knew what I was there for. Don't tell me what anybody else knew, sir. You were not told that there was no vet inside by the first person that you encountered. No, that's wrong. No, I was absolutely right, sir, in what I said to you. So say yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right. John Wheat has accused vet assistants Heather Schilling and Hannah Hensley of injuring him after an assault in the parking lot. Go ahead. I explained that it was an emergency. Just a second. The person that you were talking to, you just told me, was dealing with another client who had another animal out in the and parking I told lot. And that it was an emergency. I, okay. Well, you know, and one man's I, emergency is not. How's the cat? Now? Yes. The cat's fine from that injury, but he's blind now. Well, fine from that, did you get the cat to a vet? I did. How far away? 20 minutes. And what did they do to the cat? Clean and sutured. And you took him home? I did. 
And you took him the same day? I did. Um, yes. And when you went to the second vet, it was an emergency vet? It was. Okay. Did they have a curbside arrangement no. there? They did not? No. Had you called them? If no. you drove... Well, you mean you drove 20 minutes not knowing if they could get to see a vet? They're open. How do you know? I've been there many times. <laughs> I, Mr. Wheat, do you think that I think that you drove with your cat without calling first to see if they were open in a vet there when they had already told you that their vet wasn't there? Why would I get in the car? I wouldn't at least make a the call. The only other vet that's available right there. Well, how do you know that that vet was available? I've never been there where they've not. Okay. You have any medical records for me to see of your injuries? I'd like to see My them. My injuries? Yeah. No. Well, I'd like to see them. I have, I have pictures of my injuries. I'd like to see that. Miss Schilling said that you spit in her face. Is that true? That's not true. You're not, I, ha, I don't have any lower teeth. When she was in my face yelling at me and I was yelling back that, at her, that's when she made that accusation. It was more than just a little bit of spittle, hmm? Your Honor. It was what? More than just a little bit of spittle, Your Honor. It was he full on spit. Okay. Do you have a police report? I do. I'd like to take a look at it. Okay, so the police report indicates that they were called. I assume they were called by you? Yes. Because they responded to their location. And the police officer observed red marks on her neck and her hair falling out of her head. I do have pictures as well, mm -hmm. Your Honor. Mm hmm. That's when I pulled her off of me. Mm hmm. That's when I got all those scratches mm -hmm. in my black eye. I'd like to see the defendant's photographs. Okay. Mr. Wheat, I've read the police report. I've looked at your pictures, and can I see the pictures from the defendants? I do not have a cross complaint. Your answer, Ms. Schilling and Ms. Hensley, both indicate this was a terrible incident and you just wanted to go away. Yes, Your Honor. You too. I, I, you too. I did call the police. You here. too. I called the police before they called me. You too. Mr. Wheat, you know, there are certain things that are common sense. And the common sense of it is you were upset, you were aggravated, you were angry, you were not getting what you needed. You were not told that there was no vet inside by the first person that you encountered. So no, ev you were wrong. Well, I okay. wasn't told until after the second J person came I said, no, I was absolutely right, sir, in what I said to you. I said you were not told by the first person that you encountered that there was no vet inside. So say yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Right. It wasn't until Miss Hensley came outside that she told you that there was no vet inside. That is correct, ma'am. That is correct. Right. Now, in between that time, according to you, you sat outside for five minutes. That's correct. You sat outside for five minutes and you did not do what you were instructed to do by the person who was outside taking care of another animal and they said, you have to call first. You said, you're right here. Why can't you tell them? They, they That's had, what you just told they, me. Is that correct? As soon as I finished with the conversation about them calling, they left me and went inside. That's okay. You did not call. And you sat there on the cement, according to you, and waited. Then she came outside and told you, there's no vet. That's correct. Okay. And by that time, you were very angry because now no. you had a cat that was sick. Oh, yes, absolutely. It says so in the police report that that's what you said. You said you were belligerent. I was. You were belligerent and you were angry, but the first physical contact that happened was the defendant to you. But you say you were belligerent and you were angry. Yes. And you honestly said that to me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You didn't act smart. If I had my animal that was bleeding to the vet and they said call, I would have called. And if I didn't call and if I waited outside and somebody came outside and said to me, the vet's not here, all I would have said is, why didn't somebody tell me that before? Because I waited out here for five minutes, even though I didn't do what I was told to do, which was to call first and check in. Do you understand? Your case is dismissed. We're done. This court is adjourned. Obviously, I have to stand by what she said. I think that it was very fair. I think that she saw that he was an angry man who 
was upset about his cat. They were the aggressor to me. As soon as he was screaming and yelling, I think that that was the line. I was holding up my hand, trying to protect myself from her. She hit me, broke my glass, gave me a black eye. The sooner that you leave, the sooner you can get your cat treatment. I was upset at some point, I would have to say. That's true. Pretty bad. I've been having issues, like working with people coming up to the door. Cat survived. He is not welcome. The police did place a no trespass, and that was honestly our goal. We just didn't want him to come back. You know, people get really upset when their pets are injured mm -hmm. and they can't get immediate care. It's not quite as acute, probably, as when your child is sick and you yep. take them to the emergency room and there are 500 people in the emergency room, but your child has a sore arm. You don't know if it's broken or not, mm -hmm. you know, and you're agitated. He was clearly agitated, mm -hmm. agitated and angry. Actually, I sympathized yeah. with him. You know, the first person could have said to him, we have no vet, if mm -hmm. it's an emergency, go someplace else. Didn't, and then he sat and waited, and as he sat and waited, got angrier and angrier, and then we have no vet, you have to go someplace else. Bottom line, it was all a bad scene, no. but it was a bad scene precipitated by him. Yeah, just listening to his story, I could tell the agitation yeah. level, just yeah. as he's waiting they, and not they, getting info, right. you could tell, and like you said, sympathize Un with it. Unfortunate, but. I think the defendants actually were interesting that they didn't file a, claim. File a counterclaim. I also was surprised because by that. Because they had, one of them, the young woman, had some serious injuries, pulled her hair out, mm -hmm. she had marks on her neck. They just said it was a bad incident, just let Jada Maxwell is suing her sister, Valastasia Maxwell, for unauthorized bank account charges and property damage. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2191, Maxwell versus Maxwell. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Maxwell, this is your sister. Correct. Older, younger? Younger. The two of you decided to take an apartment together. Correct. When was that? August 27th of 2021. Were you both on the lease? No, ma'am, just me. How long did you live together? It was about six to seven months. When did your sister leave? What month? Um, she left at the end of June of 2022. June of? 2022. Miss Maxwell, was it your arrangement that you would split the rent? No. I would pay a portion of the rent, not split it even. Well, tell me what a portion was. The first month I stayed there, which was September only, I didn't pay anything. In October through November, 200 and then after that, it was 400 Well, how much was the rent? 950 I believe. And how many of you lived in the apartment? Just us two. Well, why weren't you paying half the rent? I slept on a couch. Oh. Is that correct? That is correct, Your Honor, except for the agreement. The agreement was that she would keep the apartment clean and pay half the rent and utilities. Well, why would she pay half the rent if you get the bedroom? It was her agreement. That was just... No, I'm just saying, that doesn't sound reasonable to me. If she got the couch and you got the bedroom, why would she pay the utilities and half the rent? Well, it wasn't... The rent itself was, like, she gave me what she could, but that was just our agreement. I bought the couch big enough so okay. that she would be able to use it. Nonsense. Okay, this is what the case is about. You claim that she stopped paying any money towards the apartment and you threw her out. And when she left, she damaged some property, and then she charged some money on either your credit card or a debit card. My debit card. Did you ever give her your debit card? There was only one time when I, when I handed her with permission to use the credit card at a gas station. That's not true. Just, just... You had a physical debit card? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And the one time that you let her use it, I want you to tell me when that was and what that was for. It was, it was within the time period of her living in the apartment. We were at a gas station, and I was filling up. She went inside the gas station to purchase something because she didn't have money at the time, and that was it. That was the only time that I recall her ever giving her permission to use my card. Okay. She moved out of the apartment in June of 2022. And I understand it was not an amicable process and the police were called. Correct. Who called the police? I did. Why? My dad gave me advice and he said that I should call the, the non-emergency escort so that they can watch her, make sure that she actually leaves when, when she was asked. And what day in June was this? I do not recall the date. You don't have a police report or a number? Uh, not for that. They didn't give me a police report for that. Did they give you a police report for something else? I have the police report for the fraud. Oh, I'd like to see that. Yes, Your Honor. Because it is your claim that you used the information from your debit card and withdrew a lot of money from your debit card. Correct. 
So you reported this to the police on August 25th? 24th. It says reported okay. 825. How much money did she take out of the account? At the time of that, it was only estimated about 10, but once the July statement came out, I was able to add up more and it was nearly 14, 15 grand. May I see it, please? How did you get her banking information? I had to I call them. Shh. How did you get her banking information? I don't have her bank information. Well, you took money out of her account. You acknowledge you took money out of her account. I only took money out when she gave me permission. No, no, no. You acknowledge that you took money out of the account. I've read your answer. How did you get her account information? She gave me her card on multiple occasions. You mean after you moved out, she gave you her card? No. Shh, shh. Yes. Do you understand? You're, you're not going to end up well here. Do you understand that? Because if she called the police, if she called the police to watch you, to escort mm -hmm. you out of the house, there is no question that she did not thereafter give you permission to use her credit card or her debit card. That doesn't make sense. She Do did. you understand? Do you understand the chronology of what I'm saying to you? Yes, Your Honor. So if I were to believe you, the only time you used her credit card is when you were still there. And that was prior to June of 2022. That's incorrect. My grandmother passed away in August, August 9th of 2021. And she was my legal guardian to the age of 18. So I was under her account as a beneficiary. So when she passed, I got the money. Jada Maxwell claims her sister, Valastasia Maxwell, wrongfully took money from her bank account and damaged her property. There is no question that she did not thereafter give you permission to use her credit card or her debit card. That doesn't make sense. She Do did. You understand? Do you understand the chronology of what I'm saying to you? Yes, Your Honor. So if I were to believe you, the only time you used her credit card is when you were still there. And that was prior to June of 2022. That's incorrect. Just a second. So you're telling me that after she called the police to escort you out of the apartment, she still gave you permission to use her card? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> me and I still went over to her apartment until July 15th. For what? I had my stuff there that Just I to gather your things. Things, and she let me use her car multiple occasions to get some of the furniture that she let me have, and she told me that I can use her card. When was the last time you visited with your sister? July what? July 15th. And when was the last time you used her card? July 16th. What did you use her card for, July 16th? Rent. Between what periods of time did you use her card? Give me the dates. Since September of 2021 until July 16th. September of 21. And what was it for in September? She would send me to the store, or if I was already at the store in her car, she would tell me to use her card or something like that. She would pay me to... How get much stuff. did you spend on her card just for you? Just for you, not for joint. Not send it to the store. Um, Here's my card. I have it here. Tell me how much you spent on you. I'm not sure of the exact amount. Did the police contact you with regard to the fraud? No. They never did? No. The police report, do you name your sister as the person who stole your money? Yes, Your Honor. There is a... The bank told me... Um... No, don't tell me what the bank told you. Bank doesn't tell you anything. Would you show me here... Uh, maybe I'm missing it. Where you report the person who took the money out of your account? That is the only document they... When I went down to the station that they gave me, um, when I went to actually make the, the, the file, uh, she just asked me a couple questions, who I... No, no, was. don't ask... Don't tell me what somebody else asked you. Yes, Your Honor. Did you report to the police that it was your sister who fraudulently took your money? I did, but the police, eventually, they cut it off because I was going to pursue small claims. They told me that they are no longer needed. Oh, small claims. Why were you going to pursue small claims? How because much money do you... How much money that. does she have? <laughs> Miss Maxwell, let's get it together. Let's get it all together, okay? 
you were not going to pursue small claims because you knew that in small claims you would end up with zero. Uh, you knew at that. At the time, I didn't understand what everything meant, which is why I tried calling a bunch of people and I spoke to, like... Um... No, I just want to know mm -hmm. why at this point, because the bank gave you back some money. Correct. How much money did the bank give you back? Um, I have it here. It was about um, 4900 nearly five grand. Okay, and they gave you back almost $5,000. I'd like to see the communication with the bank. Um, with the bank as to, I mean, if you are alleging fraud, right. if you're alleging fraud and you say that you had all of this money taken out of your account. Correct. Okay, then there's no reason why the bank, if you were alleging fraud and they found that there was fraud, why wouldn't they return all the money? Because they have a policy that within the three months, the first, they can only go up to the first three months. And because I didn't, I didn't realize sooner, they can only go up to that three months. So they were only able to, to give me back within the transactions within those three months. Is this a savings account or a checking it, account? It was beneficiary. What is that? Um, when somebody passed and you get money. Explain that to me. I'm just... I don't understand what the beneficiary account is. Um, my grandmother passed away in August, August 9th of 2021. And she was my legal guardian to the age of 18. So I was under her account as a beneficiary. So when she passed, I got the money. So you were living with your grandmother? Correct. Okay. And what was the benefit package? What do you mean? How much did you get as a beneficiary? It was about 50 grand. On what date? I'm not sure when it was processed, but the, it was opened. This payment started of October of 2021. Or transactions started. I don't started. understand what a beneficiary account is. Who paid the money? Who paid this $50,000? My grandmother. She would put money in there so that if something were to happen to her, the money would go to me or whoever she listed. Your Honor. It's a type of savings account. In simple words, a beneficiary bank account is a type of savings account in which the funds are transferred to somebody else after the account owner passes away directly to the beneficiary. Okay. This had nothing to do with you receiving benefits through your grandmother. No. This is an account that your grandmother set up for you. Correct. Now, is that grandmother also her grandmother? Yes, Your Honor. Did you have a relationship with your grandmother? Yes, I did. Did she only set up the one account? I'm not sure, but I wasn't the only one that received money. What about you? Nothing. Okay, so how much is left in that account now? Uh, the account is closed out. By whom? At the bank. After a certain, like, un once it goes under a certain amount, they send you a check with the rest of the money. How much did they send you a check for? It was about $200. Well, who spent the $50,000? I made transactions throughout the time period as okay. well. Okay. What did you buy with fifty thousand dollars? I just, I just basically used it. What does that mean? I, I wasn't responsible with it. I'll be honest about that. Did you know that your sister had this fifty thousand dollar amount of money? I didn't know she had that much. No. Did you know she had any? Yeah. Did you know where it came from? Yes. You have here July total. $3,148.14. What does that number represent? All transactions that were confirmed to be her added up total. You can't use her credit card after you're not speaking to your sister. Jada Maxwell has accused her sister, Velastasia Maxwell, of taking money from her bank account and damaging her property. Now, what did you buy with $50,000? I just, I just basically used it. What does that mean? I wasn't responsible with it. I'll be honest about that. Did you know that your sister had this $50,000 amount of money? I didn't know she had that much, no. Did you know she had any? Yeah. Did you know where it came from? Yes. Are you working? Yes. What kind of work do you do? I'm a cashier. And what about you? I currently work at Chipotle and I also Uber on the side. When was the last time you saw your sister? July 16th. Or, I'm sorry, July, um, July 20th. Are there any charges here after 
July 16th of 2021. Yes, Your Honor, I actually gave that up already. In the top, it says July, it's, it's written on there. Just a second. I'm gonna give this back to you. Yes, Your Honor. Find any charges that were made after July 16th. It was after July 16th was the last time you saw your sister? No contact, we didn't have okay. contact. So the last time that you saw her was in July? Correct. You have here July total $3,148.14. What does that number represent? That is, uh, that's the all transactions that were confirmed to be her added up total in just the month of July. Were there any? Yes, yes, it goes in, it, if it goes. Were there order. any charges? There were quite a few. In August, or was July the last amount of money that you took out? In August, the card got cut off, so there were no. Okay, more. so that the most that she incurred on the card in July was $3,000. Correct, Your Honor. And she left on July? She was kicked out at the end of June. The end of June? Correct. Yes, June of 2022. Correct. And that was with a police escort? Correct. No. Okay. Police watching you? They left and I was still in the apartment. But they were there, they were called. Right. Okay. Now, what property do you allege that your sister damaged? Because that's the second part of your lawsuit. It was a couch and what? it was um, $1,100. Well, I have pictures of the aftermath of when she was kicked out and what the, the state of the apartment was left in, including the couch. Just show me the couch. If she damaged your couch, let me see it. I can't see what the damage is to this couch. Um, it shows better in other pictures. Yeah. I don't see damage, I just see a lot of dirt. Um, under the cushions there was mold and then there's a picture that shows uh, two cigarette burns that her friend left. Could you return this to the plaintiff, please? A lot of dirt, okay. Anything else? Thank you. You can't use her credit card after you're not speaking to your sister. I don't believe I didn't, she, yes you did, $3,148. I did not spend $3,000. Kevin. These are July's statements. I think one of those things is yours. The bottom document. Okay, anything else? Judging for the plaintiff in the amount of $3,148. We're done here. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. There was a lot more to show, but I'm glad I got something back. She took a lot from me. I don't see how you can decide I made a transaction with my name written in pen. And caused a lot of downfall after the fact. She's just mad, I guess. I'm not sure. I almost ended up homeless. I almost lost my job because of this. I didn't cause any damage. It was very hard. I didn't want to, I didn't even want to press charges because she's my sister. Nothing. They pulled up, they said that I had to leave, and I said, no, I already paid my portion, and they said, okay, and they left. No, she was kicked out prior to that. My friend did do that, I can say that, but like... She's just lying. I didn't damage anything. At this point, I, I just, I don't believe her, I don't trust her, she took advantage of me. Hopefully we can just debt it, but I don't know. But, so I'm just glad that I was able to get something back so I can continue to get back up on my feet. One day at a time. I'm hoping for an apology some remorse. Who knows? After I confronted her and she admitted to it, she ignored and cut everybody out. She didn't even say she was sorry. She didn't speak to me. I don't know. You know, it's a little bit easier now to commit fraud using someone's credit card, even if you only had access to the physical card for five seconds. It's long enough to take a picture of the back and input all the information into the door dashes, the Ubers, all the accounts. And if you don't check carefully, you may not notice for a couple months. So, I mean, I've been a victim of fraud in that way, and I know it can be very stressful trying to deal with the credit card company, and especially when it's your sister. I mean, my sister better think twice before using my credit card. Do you know, generationally, I have a problem. It's actually my problem because I'm used to writing out a check. I have a checkbook. I write out the check. I deduct 
the check from my balance. I know what is... How they taught it, you in fourth grade. To, that, to absolutely. Balance. You want <laughs> to make a deposit in a savings account. We were taught you brought $2, you put it in a bank account, in the bank book every Friday. Your teacher stamped it, $2. That's how you save money. And the fact that you can walk into a store and take oh. your phone and go like that yep. and charge... And who knows whose information is on there? frightening to me. It all sounds as if it's going to collapse around <laughs> me. But everybody, I think everybody who's under 50 uses that probably yeah. more than 50 because <laughs> my children are Maybe. actually 50. It's hard to <laughs> come to terms with that. But they all use their... Online banking. Online and... banking. Yeah. I still don't have my banking <laughs> I, online. I know. <laughs> I still do. Yeah. I still call them. <laughs> yeah. They say, it's her again on the phone. <laughs> you know you could do this online, online now, right? <laughs> yeah. No. Anyway. Well, keep doing it your it. way and... Hopefully, we don't get uh, ruined by our way. <laughs> yeah, fingers crossed. She seemed like a decent young woman, yeah. the plaintiff. You know, it's sad. Her grandmother saved probably all of her life yeah. so that her granddaughter had a little nest egg of $50,000, and she blew through it. Yeah. Blew through it. Unfortunate, but I appreciate the honesty. And it was honest. Put money in trust. Levi Shaw is suing his parents, Davery and Nathan Celestine for the repair costs of an 18-wheeler truck. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. How are you? Case number 2032, Shaw v. Celestine. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Shaw, these are your parents, is that right? Yes, they are. How old are you? I'm 26. Just the very broad framework of this case. You're suing your parents for money that you put into a truck that belongs to them. Correct. And they are counterclaiming for money that they say you owe them for a balance of a dog they purchased for you. Mm -hmm. The truck that you fixed belonged to your parents. Yes, the agreement was... It, no, it the truck them, that you yes. fixed belonged to your parents. And Correct. what I gather is that you would come into some money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm is not an answer. Oh, yes, ma'am. And when did you come into that money? I never came into any money from them after I fixed Not the from truck. them. I didn't say from them that you mm -hmm. came into some money. Uh-huh. Uh-huh is not an I'm, answer. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. I came into some so money I in want October. You to, in October, mm -hmm. you were not employed. I was employed. By I, whom? Trucking. Is that their company? No. I was working with them and their brother. So you were working with the family? Yes. Okay. That was in October. Yes, October of 2021. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, it's not an answer. I mean, yes, yes ma'am, I'm sorry. And how much did you come into? About $10,000 for the month of September and October. And then your father said to you, I assume, you should take some of that money and buy a 16-wheeler truck so that you... No, ma'am. Well, how did that happen, sir, that so, you got possession of your parents' truck? So it... Did you try to buy a truck on your own? Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay, and in what month... Failed. Just a second. In what month did you try to buy a truck for yourself? January. January? of 2022? Yes, ma'am. And tried to buy a truck so that you could have your own truck for long hauling and business. Yes, ma'am. And you went to a dealer and you found the truck that you liked, but you didn't qualify for financing. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And how much is a new truck? That truck, it wasn't new. It was a 2015 and they priced it at $60,000. 60? ,000. Yes, ma'am. And you told your parents about that? Yes, ma'am. And ma there was a discussion that they had an older truck that wasn't running. It needed minor work. It that needed... That to me. Okay. So they said to you, it needs minor work. Was it running? It was running, but the diamond seal was cracked, so eventually the truck was just going to break down completely. Okay. So you took that truck with the understanding that you were going to repair the truck, and then what? To make money. But one... So you would repair the truck and then use it? Yes, ma'am. And you would keep most of the profits from using that truck? I mean, I'm trying to understand well, the, what the, the agreement, agreement was. was. My dad, Nathan, told me that the truck was only going to be worth $4,000 to fix, which was a diamond seal. It needs some bushings. It needs something for the exhaust pipe. Okay. And I was like, okay. But when the dude kept calling me for the truck, and he was like, okay, this needs to be done. This but you to took the truck into a mechanic? Yes, ma'am. And did they give 
give you an estimate? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Before or after they did the work? They gave me one before, but I don't have that estimate, but I have the one for after. You mean after they completed the work, they sent you a bill? Yes, ma'am. Well, that's not an estimate. An estimate, sir, is when you go in and say, here is a truck. I want you to give me an estimate of what it is to have it fixed. Mm -hmm. And they give you an estimate, and then you determine whether or not you want them to do any or all of that work, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I would never bring a truck into any mechanic or to any dealership well, when mechanic was, and say, fix it. When they was calling me, telling me additional problems that was wrong, I would call them, which I have my phone records that show that I was also calling them once the dealership called me to fix the truck. Well, because just a second. Because some stuff on the truck wasn't able, like, it needed a new gear, it needed new transmission was messed up on the truck, just which I Just a second. I All them. I want is what you're telling me, that your father told you to go ahead and fix those things each time yes. you got a call? Yes. Okay, so you would call and your father would not say to you, well, how much is that to fix? Well, yeah, he was, but I had already had a settled amount that I told him that I was willing to spend, which was 10000 Well, did you spend 10000 The truck was actually over 10000 I understand to fix but it, I but did, you actually they did spent... Have 10, 000, you yes. actually spent the 10000 10900 to okay. be exact. To fix the truck? Yes, ma'am. And you have the truck? Yes, ma'am. And... I think the truck was 13000 to fix. Yes, ma'am. So you paid the additional $3,000. Yes, ma'am. Now the truck is running. Yes, ma'am, it's running. It was running before, young. But it's running now better because yes, there are... Yes, ma'am. Because... Not using it. Just a second. I can only hear from one of you. He said the truck is in use. You said no. It's not used. Or is the truck... No, Jan, I misunderstood what you said. I thought you was talking about the repair. You saying is the truck operable now? Yes, it's operable, but it's not on the road. It's not on the road? Who yes, cares if it's not on the road? Oh, yes, the idea the idea was he was supposed to fix the truck and supposed to be able to use the truck. Yes, ma'am. Is he able to use the truck? Yes, he's able to use the truck. Okay, great. When was the last time he tried to use the truck? He never tried to use the truck after it was fixed. He said that he no longer wanted to be a part of the deal to give him his money back. Okay. I have something. Now, when the truck originally got fixed in February, my dad came into town multiple times. It was one more piece that needed to be fixed, which was the ABS module, which if you get pulled over, they're going to stop you and shut you down completely. Just, I don't know. And that. I told him, hey, we need to get that fixed. He came into town three times, and I asked him, hey, is you going to take the truck to the shop? Hey, is you going to take the truck to the shop? He said, no. And he's like, well, it don't have any insurance. And it was just a whole bunch of excuses why he couldn't take the truck to the shop. Whether he can or he can't, he says, and your mother says you're able to use the truck. But I don't have a CDL, so I'm not able to drive it. Well, you didn't have that when you took it in anyway. Mm -hmm. To be fixed. But I didn't take the truck over there. He drove the truck to the mechanic shop. Whatever. I don't care who drove it there, but your agreement with him was you tried to buy a new truck. It was much too expensive. Your agreement with your parents was that you would take an older truck of theirs that needed a lot of work, and you took it into a mechanic, and the mechanic was going to fix the truck, make it operable, so that you would have an opportunity to use it and make money. Yes, ma'am. And so I'm asking you, now the truck is fixed to the tune of $13,000. When was the last time that you asked to use the truck that your parents said you can't? Well, I asked him, can I have his dad take the truck to get the additional piece put on? And he told me no, just to wait till he come into town. Okay. After the agreement that your son was going to pay the money, fix the truck, was your agreement with him that he could use it at will? I gave him a... Specific time. I'd like to hear what the specific uh, time was. Specific were. time was. Don't let's make it up as we go. No, no, ma'am. I'm thinking straight to you. I'm gonna tell you just like it out to you. Levi Shaw claims his parents, Davery and Nathan Celeste, owe for the repairs of an 18 wheeler truck. Levi's parents are counters to it for the balance of an English bulldog. Was the additional piece put on the truck that he's talking about? No, ma'am, it didn't actually Why? need that addition. It was an ABS uh, modulator, which on that particular model was a 1995 FLD Classic. On that particular model, you don't need that to reset the ABS light. All you need is a sensor that goes in the hub of the wheel. What I'm asking you is, your son said that you needed this one part. This is your business. Yes, ma'am. How much is that one part? This is a part that I never researched, so I can't tell you that, but according okay. to him... Some Perhaps 
I didn't ask you anything. Perhaps you can tell me. The part was nine hundred dollars. That was returned back. It was never returned because they wouldn't let me return it because it's dealing with wires. So when I asked them, can I return it? They said no. And I had a text where I text her and I said, hey, they will not let me return this piece. Return what piece? It, the ABS module. So they will not let me return it because it's electrical and they do not accept returns on electric pieces. So is what you're telling me that you bought this piece for nine hundred dollars? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and that it wasn't necessary. You didn't buy it from him. No, but I don't know if it was necessary, but what the mechanic told me and what You can't the tell me what the mechanic told you. Well, I'm just saying the mechanic No, you can't it, tell it. me what the mechanic told you. Well, all I'm telling you, Mr. Shaw, is you had an agreement with your parents to fix a truck mm -hmm. and then to be able to use it. And I want to know whether they have ever denied you the right, because that was the contract that you made. You never made a contract with them that you would take a truck to the mechanic and they would pay for the repairs. Mm -hmm. You never made that contract with them. You want me to say that that was your contract with them. They say the truck is operable now and that you can use it. When do you want to use it? Well, if they're willing to let me use it, then I want to use it as soon as possible. Okay, and you can drive the truck. No, I was going to hire a driver. Okay, and the truck now is not on the road, is that correct? That's correct. That's yeah, correct. Yes, ma'am, that's, right. that's right. That's right. The yeah. truck is that's not right. on the road. No, ma'am, it's is not. Is what you said, yes. but operable. Yes, it's not operable. Okay, and after the agreement that your son was going to pay the money, fix the truck, and then be able to work at it so that he's getting some benefit from what he put into the truck. Yes, ma'am. Did you have an agreement? I wanted to ask... I'm not him. looking at you. Okay. Did you have a discussion with him about how much of the time he would be able to utilize the truck, or was your agreement with him that he could use it at will? I gave him a specific time. Yes, ma'am. I'd like to hear what the specific uh, times were. The specific were. time was... Don't... Let's make it up as we go. No, no, ma'am. I'm, I'm thinking straight to you. I'm gonna tell you just like it out to you. I gave him a specifically, according to him, about three months of when he probably needed it, you know, to get himself together. No, just a second. You mean he was going to spend $10,000 on fixing the truck and you were going to let him use it for three months? Well, put as your long hand as down. He, well, I'm not uh, talking well, to you. Well, as long as he needed it, I'm going to put it that way. As long as he needed the truck. Okay. So now that's better. Yes, ma'am. So that he can use the truck whenever he needs it and he's going to get a driver. I just want to know because we're going to have to memorialize all this yes, in an order. What do you want? We had a driver. My brother was the driver. I don't care whether your brother was the driver or not. That was not the agreement that your husband said he made with his son. Yes, ma'am. He says he made an agreement with him that if he paid to have it fixed, he could use the truck whenever he wanted to. That's what your father says. No, that is not correct. Okay, that is not so true. when did you ask to use the truck? So in January, when I was getting the truck fixed, they told me 4000 But as the mechanic kept calling me, adding on stuff, I said, hey, I'm not about to pay all this money, and y'all telling me I can just use it. If I'm about to put all my money into it, I want the truck. And my mom was like, okay, you can do that. Because in January, they didn't what? make any money Just because... a second. So what you're telling me is what you said to your mother, I'm not going to put in all this money unless the truck belongs to me. Correct. Well, that's not unreasonable, Mr. Shaw. I can actually see that. You're spending $10,000 of your money and you want to be able to use the truck. Mm -hmm. And you want it to be able to not have it on a whim of somebody else. Yes, ma'am. How old is this truck? This truck is exactly 20... Two years old. How long have you owned it? I've owned it since I was 23 years old. Okay. So you've owned it tech since it was new? Yes, ma'am. Did you make a living from it? Yes, ma'am, I did. Good. Do you have any other trucks now? Yes, ma'am, I do. How many others? Just one other. I, I'm not no big scale company. I just got a, one other truck, yes, ma'am. Can I see the title to the truck, please? To the truck we're talking about? Yes. I don't have that title with me. Why not? I was. <laughs> Under the impression that I didn't need to bring it. Okay. And according to you, the truck's not on the road now? No, ma'am, it's not on the road. Do you remember having a conversation with your son about, I'm not going to spend all this money unless the truck is mine? Yes, ma'am, I do remember okay. that conversation. Do you remember where it took place? He was driving and I was at home. So it was over the phone? Yes, ma'am. Remember what month that was? January. January of 2022. Correct. Tell me what you said to him and what he said to you. I told him, I totally understand what you're saying. I said, let me talk to your daddy and we'll see what we could do. But Great. As a parent, that sounds perfectly reasonable. And did you speak to your husband? Yes, I did. Did the two of you own the truck? He owns the truck. It's in his name, in Nathan's name. So you said, okay, that sounds okay. Let me talk to your daddy. You have to talk to the owner of the truck because Correct. now you're seeking to change the agreement. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. And after you spoke to your mother, did you have a conversation with your father about the ownership of the truck? Yes, we did. And tell me when that was and what was discussed. It was in January as well, and when I told him that, he said he totally agreed with me that if I put in majority of the money, that I can have the truck. Okay. I want to tell you certain things sort of ring true to me. If I were a young person and spending all my money for a business, because this is the business that he was going to be in, he was going to hire a driver, and he was going to take a certain amount of the profits, I could understand him saying to his parents, who now have a truck that they're not using because it's not on the road, I'm going to spend all my savings, it looks like, because the initial estimate was $4,000, but it kept going up and up and up and up and up. So... If I'm going to spend all this... Mo- Put your hand down. If I'm going to spend all this money, I'd like to own the truck. And in response to that, his mother said and acknowledges that she said, it sounds right to me, I'm going to speak to your father. And according to you, you spoke to your father, and your father said, sounds OK. Yes, ma'am. So you went ahead and spent the money. Yes, ma'am. OK. Put your hand down. This Yana, is not I don't a. Understand. This is not. Yana. I care. I'd have made over a million dollars with truck. truck. That's ridiculous. Hey, I want you to stop it. Say, man. Hey, man. Okay. How can you tell me now, to stop on something going... I work blood, sweat, and tears on? He okay. finna take. Levi Shaw says his parents, Davery and Nathan Celeste, owe for the costs of repairs to an 18-wheeler truck. Levi's parents say he never used the truck, and it is still not fixed. I'd like to see the bills for the truck. Oh, I have it on my phone. Well, what is that? These was the bank statements, because at first, they was countersuing for insurance as well. So I was showing bank statements where I had sent them money. So no, that's what these was yeah. for. But I have it on my phone, but I don't have it in the statements. Well, I need it. Here you go. Is that the f- one final invoice? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to see it. And it also I have at the bottom where it says it needs the ABS module. <sighs> Your Honor, can I see that as well? Yes. Well, so the entire amount is $13,000. $13,000 and some change. And your father paid three? Yes, ma'am. This is not the correct invoice. What? She I got have the, the, original. the original invoice. Oh, fine, I'll take a look this at yours. This is the invoice that was sent to me via, so by their email, which I can pull up their email as well. And it shows that it's paid on the back. Just a second. Yes, ma'am. It's the same thing as he showed me. But it has our name on it. Who cares? The ones that he showed you, it changed since then. Well, but let me ask you a question. No. Unless I'm missing something. No, 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 no. You're not questioning the fact that he paid $10,000 to fix the truck <laughs> out of the $13,000 that the truck was. Are you questioning that? No, I'm not okay. questioning that. Okay, then I don't know what we're talking about. Okay. Let's go over this one more time. When your son said to you, you know, if I'm going to spend all this money, I want to own the truck, and your wife had the same conversation with you, right? She said, I got a call from Levi. Levi said if he's going to spend all this money, he really wants the truck, and she actually thought it was okay. And what did you say, sir? I said that I'm not going to sell you the truck. Why? I will let you use the truck. No, no. When did you say that? Because I have other children. Oh, no, and... but your other children didn't put any money into the no, truck. No, no, I know, I know No, what just a second. Your other children didn't put I any money into saying, the truck. I know what you're saying, but there's like... Hand a... down. He didn't okay. ask me to buy the truck. Okay. Right? He asked, could he use it? Just a second. He was going to sell it to my uncle because when the repairs got done, they actually didn't have enough money because I had 8000 saved up. They took 4000 of my 8000 That you got to paid pay back. The... Yes, but they didn't have the money, so That's when not they... True. You, you just... Mr. Shaw, Mr. Shaw... I don't expect you to talk to each other. I don't expect you to talk to him. Yes, ma'am, I understand. Very easy. I believe that you changed the contract with your son from a contract where he would pay for the repairs, which was supposed to be $4,000, and then have the use of the truck to the fact that he was going to spend $10,000, which was all of his money. Put your hand down. I'm not... This 22-year-old truck that you've had since it was new was going to be his. And I am going to craft an order to the Department of Motor Vehicles to reissue a title in the truck to him. Do you understand? He's going to take that order, he's going to get a new registration for the car and a new ownership. 
unless you want to put your hand down. This is this Your is Honor, not I don't a. Understand this is not. It's not. I don't understand that. Well, I got other children. I got five me, other kids. Do you want me? Right? Do you want me to and say it's spoiled, slower? Your Honor. And I say, what about the 3,500 that we put into it? You're absolutely right. Okay. But it wasn't 4,500. It was 3,500. 35. I'm sorry if you didn't hear me well. Man, man, man. You are absolutely entitled to that. Dude. I believe you are Dude. entitled to that. He put in Dude. 10. That's Dude. his truck. I, I, I made, I mean, Your Honor, I worked all my life with that truck. I don't care. I worked all my... Uh, I, I don't care. care. He's not going to spend Yana. this $10,000 on to fix your truck. I done made over a million dollars with truck. truck. That's ridiculous. I want you to stop it. Say, man. Hey, man. Okay. Can, how can you tell me now, to stop on something going... I work blood, sweat, and tears on? He's going to take. I need a break. That's the judgment. I'm not entertaining your counterclaim. That's the judgment of the court. You get title to the truck. You can retrieve it as soon as you change the registration of the truck. However, in order to do that, you have to give your parents the $3,500 that they put into the truck. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, what about we're this done. dog? We're yeah, done. We this court is adjourned. We're done. 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 We're disrespectful and didn't listen to me. Oh, yes, you did. That's it. We're done. Right. My actions of my response to what she was saying is wasn't nothing being disrespectful towards her. I'm very glad she ruled in my favor. It was the initial, you know, the, the thought of giving up my hard-earned possessions. It was because I did try to work it out before we came to court, and they was like, no, we're not going to pay you nothing. I what? never would have thought in a million years to my parents, even though they, you know, my parents with my butt. But that was just something you had to go through back then. It saddens me. I'm in disbelief that my parents did that to me. I didn't think that they would do that. I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know his plans. I can't, can't talk that. If you do business with family, make sure you get contracts. You know, I sympathize with the plaintiff's position on this because modifications of contracts are supposed to be allowed when there's a change in circumstance. So it's not like he was attempting to change the contract every Friday or for no reason. He thought that it was going to be $4,000. It turned out to be 10000 to fix the truck. And as such, he wanted a bargain for exchange. That's a lot more money than he initially intended. So that conversation makes sense to me, that that, that conversation between his parents, that I know we had agreed to this, but now with this new information, this is what I'm comfortable with. Is that okay? I think so. And I think that is a common sense exactly. interpretation of for, what happened. For a truck that cost 60000 20 years ago, to put in $10,000 to it is not nothing. That's a, that's a big investment. Well, it probably isn't worth more than that. And the condition that it was in before he had it repaired, mm -hmm. their position was unreasonable mm -hmm. because now they have a fixed truck that their child paid that for. That their child paid for. And with the animus between them, it doesn't seem to me as if he's going to get any benefit no. from the bar. Brother Stevens for vet bills and pain and suffering after a dog attack. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. Case 2139, Stevens versus Stevens. Thank you. You're welcome. Although your names sound the same, they're spelled differently, and you are clearly not related based upon this case. You live in the same general area. Yes. Okay. Could you step up? Tell me your name. Emily Ferringer. This is your daughter? Yes. How long have you been living in your house? Eight and a half years. How old are you? 22. Tell me what you do. I work at a bakery right now, and I'm a full-time college student. Where do you go to school? Idaho State University. You were out walking the family dog. Yes, I Family was. has one dog? Just one, yeah. What kind of dog? It's a miniature schnauzer. Weighs about 10, 12 pounds? Yeah, around there, 15-ish. How old is the dog? He is nine. You've had him since he was a puppy? Yes. This case has to do with injuries that your dog sustained yes. and the payment of vet bills by the defendant, who you allege has two dogs unleashed that attacked your dog while you were walking. Correct. Him. Just one dog. One dog. One. One dog attacked our dog. You have a pit bull? Yes, ma'am. What color? White and brown. How old? She's five. Is that the only dog you have? Yes, ma'am. OK. Tell me what date you were walking the dog that this incident happened. July 26, 2021. Time? Around 8 p.m. Dark? No. Still light out? Yes, ma'am. Were you walking in the neighborhood? I was. I was walking down the sidewalk, and I passed the defendant's house, and I reached the end of the sidewalk. Your dog's name is what? Jax. On a leash? Yes, ma'am. Do you always walk the dog on a leash? We do. 
Tell me what happened. I was walking down the sidewalk and I reached the end of the sidewalk. I was about to cross the street and- Do you have a picture, a diagram? I do, I have a diagram. Yes. May I see it, please? Oh, okay. There it is. Would you go over to the diagram so that you can point directly and I can understand where this happened? I was standing right here and I noticed the dog come up on my left side. On your left side? Yes. Did you notice from where the dog came? It seemed to be out in the street when it approached me. So it didn't come from the defendant's house, it came from the street? Yes, it had been on the left-hand side of me. And then the pit bull latched onto my dog on its leg. What color pit bull? Brown and white. Was there any fighting or a scuffle before? No, ma'am, it just ran up to me and it latched onto my dog's leg and it picked my dog up and was yanking it around in the air. And it was very loud and my dog was squealing a lot and crying out very loudly. So I yanked his leash so that I didn't have to bend down and get hurt myself. And I picked him up and I ran back. So you home. yanked him up by his leash? I did. Okay, did he have what kind of a collar on? A regular collar or one of those harnesses? We have both, so I'm not sure which one he was wearing at that time, but I believe he was wearing the collar. Just the collar? Yes. So you lifted him up by the collar? Yes. Did you see where the dog went? I do not remember. I think the pit bull ran back into the defendant's household. But you're not sure? I'm not sure. What did you do next? We took the dog to the animal hospital. Okay, you can go back now. Stand close to you. Sorry. Had you ever seen this dog before? I have. Where had you seen the dog before? I've seen the pit bull in multiple places around the neighborhood. I've seen it across... That same dog? Yes. I've seen it across the street in that across the street neighbor's yard. And I've also seen it in my yard. And it's also been next to my chain link fence before. Did you or you, Miss Stevens, ever have a conversation with the defendant about the dog being unleashed? I have not spoken to her at all. For how long have you seen her unleashed dog out and about? Probably about 10 times. Have you ever said anything to your mother about seeing this dog outside? I have. Okay, I'm listening. Yes, ma'am. May I show you on the- Absolutely. On the diagram? Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, first of all- No, don't tell me first of all. Okay. Were you thanks. there at approximately yes. 8 p.m. Yes, on I July 26th? Correct, I was. Okay, where were you? Show me where you were. I was right here. I was loading a fridge into my home. I had my dog right here in the middle of the driveway, chained to the fence, okay? She came from across the crosswalk here, because I have a witness as well to show. She came from the crosswalk with her dog in front of her. She came across right into my driveway. The dog went into my driveway, and my dog went up to her and they began to fight. You're going like this. Uh-huh, yeah. You're going like this. I don't want you to go like this. Okay. So your dog, was on a chain. Yes, ma'am. A chain that extended almost to the end of your driveway. Correct. So show me exactly with your finger. Okay, yes. Where, where you say this confrontation between the pit bull and the schnauzer took place. Right here, ma'am. Well, you're pointing to about a, f well, you, now you keep moving your finger. Right here. You know that I don't believe that your dog hasn't been out and about in the neighborhood. Unleashed. No, ma'am. I don't let my dog off a leash. We do have pictures of the dog as well, if you'd like to see those. Oh, do you? We yes. Do. You mean out and about? Yes. yes. Oh, I'd like to see that. Audrey Stevens claims her neighbor, Heather Stevens, owes for vet bills after her dog was injured by Heather's pit bull. Now you're moving your finger, so you're saying it's right at the end of your driveway. Yes, ma'am. Just That's... a second, it was up further five seconds ago. Okay, Now your dog could... was right here, uh, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. The fight okay. occurred right here. Well, now your finger is at a different place, madam. Well, I'm just letting you know, your finger moves up the driveway. Right, I'd say right here. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You know that I don't believe that. I know you don't believe that. You, Honor, you, know, you know that I don't believe that your dog hasn't been out and about in the neighborhood. 
Do you know that I don't believe that? I don't think she's lying to me that your dog's been out and about in the neighborhood. Unleashed. No, ma'am. I don't let my dog off a leash. We do have pictures of the dog as well, if you'd like to see those. Oh, do you? We yes. Do. You mean out and about? Yes. Oh, I'd like to see that. And this is after. Shh, shh. Sorry. I don't care before or after. Yeah. She just said, I don't let my dog go out without a leash. Well, this is the injury. Ms. Stevens, these pictures belie the fact that your dog is out, leashed only. Do you want to see the photograph? Yes, ma'am, please. Yes, Your Honor, I do see that, but I was outside with my dog at that time. I don't time. care whether you were outside with your dog or not. You said your dog is never out without a leash. That's not true. That's not true. Were you a witness to this? Yes, ma'am. Be very careful. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Tell me your name. My name is Karen Brennan. Are you a neighbor? No, I am a friend. A friend of whose? Of Heather Stevens. Go ahead. Well, on that day... On what day? On July 26, I was helping Heather with the fridge. With the, what? With the refrigerator. And I was approaching the driveway. Just a second. You were helping her with the refrigerator doing what? Bringing the dolly out so it can be moved. Bringing the dolly out from where? From the side of the house. And? And I looked over and I saw the little dog and it caught you my eye. You saw what? The little dog. And it caught my eye because every time before, and, and you know, any time I put the dog out, Miss Stevens' dog, that, that little dog, if it was in the backyard, would continually bark it. Just a second. Did you put the dog out that day? No, I did not that day. But I recognized so the dog. So you did not put the dog out? No. That day? Not that day. Okay. What time did you get to Miss Stevens' house? Uh, Mid-afternoon. What's her dog's name? Lily. Was Lily chained to the fence all afternoon? When we were... <laughs> Was Lily chained to the fence all afternoon? That's either a yes or a no. When you were there. That's either a yes or a no. Was Lily chained to the fence all afternoon when you were there? You said you got there mid-afternoon. This happened at 8 o'clock. Was the dog chained to the fence all the time you were there? Yes or a no? No. Or I don't know? No. No. Where was the dog? In the backyard. Until what time? Until around 7, 7 ish or so. I don't know the exact time, but it was mid evening. Okay. And what happened at that time when the dog was moved from the backyard outside of the backyard? Who moved the dog? We went to go get the refrigerator. No, no, no. Who moved the dog? Heather did. She took the dog from the backyard. Yes. Just a second. To the backyard to the driveway. Just to to the driveway, because that's where she pointed out that the dog was chained to the driveway fence. Yes. When we came back from the... We went to go get the refrigerator. Just a minute. Well, you didn't tell me, so you left the house. Yes. What time did you leave the house? Mid-afternoon. It was like... What time? Approximately four or five. Okay. And the dog at that time was where? With us in the vehicle. So you had the dog in the car, so the dog was in the backyard. Yes. And then from the backyard, the dog went with you. In the car? Correct. And then what? And then we picked up the refrigerator, and we came back, and then she had chained her. Okay. So from the car, from the car, the dog went to the fence, which is chained sort of midway up the fence, according to the defendant, sort of midway up the driveway. Correct. Is where she chained the dog. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. Then where did you go? And then I... Went to go get the dolly and bring it around so we could get the fridge Okay, out. and where did Miss Stevens stay? She was in the driveway. And it was when you were coming out of the backyard that you saw Miss Stevens in the driveway? Yes. And saw the little dog? Yes. She was in the driveway. Was she next to the dog? Go over there and point out where she was. Would you in the driveway? She was... A... She, Miss Stevens? That Miss Stevens, yes. Your friend? Yes. Was right in the middle of the driveway near where the dog was chained? Yes. And show me where the defendant's house is, because you had been in the house earlier that day. Point on that diagram where the house is. Right here. Where it says defendant. Yes. That's the whole house. And where's the front door? Right here. Up there. And where's the porch on the front door? Right there. Okay. Now, that's not where she was. She was in the driveway. Correct. Okay. Now, go back. Now, I'm going to read to you 
what your friend Miss Stevens wrote and swore to in her answer. I was standing on the porch, maneuvering the fridge inside, and I saw a little dog sniffing around and walking up my driveway. She said she was on the porch. Well, she was back she to, That's where she said she was, on the porch. I know the plaintiff's dog is a barker, since it has come to the backside of my property and barked at my dog through the fence. The dog walked all the way up the driveway to where my dog was. Now, you want to think back? Miss Stevens says she was standing on the porch. You were very certain she was standing mid-driveway right near her dog. Which one is it? Well, we were trying to maneuver the fridge. No, 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 no. Which one is it? Was she on the porch, which is all the way at the other end? Yes. Or was she mid-driveway? Mid-driveway. She was mid-driveway. So yeah. Miss Stevens lied when she said she was on the porch. I didn't look at a police report. I listened it's to your... One I listened to you. Yes, Your Honor. And I listened to your witness. Yes. And you and the witness that you brought told two divergent stories, two totally different stories. She was your witness. Audrey Stevens is accusing her neighbor, Heather Stevens, of losing control of her pit bull. Heather claims Audrey's dog ran onto her property. So Miss Stevens lied when she said she was on the porch. That's what she says in her answer. I was on the porch when this happened. You understand? When, uh, when I... Do you understand? Yes. Sit. Can I see your vet bills, please? Your Honor, I have a video of my dog. Can we present the video that I have brought? You mean for that day? Yes, ma'am. No, that... not for that day. No, not for that day, but just to show you that my dog is not vicious. Oh, what? And she <laughs> likes to play with little dogs. Clearly not on this day. She didn't like to play with other dogs. That dog is constantly barking at my dog in the backyard, and that's the only... My dog loves dogs. I have her obedient record. Miss Stevens, Miss Stevens. Yes. I want you to understand something. Yes, ma'am. Whether the schnauzer is a barker or not a barker, I told you, I didn't believe you when you told me that her dog was off leash. I didn't believe that. Either you or your witness lied. I don't know which one. So I'm going to have to assume it was your witness. Do you want me to assume it was your witness or you? So one of you lied. She says you were in a totally different place. She was coming out from the backyard. That's where she was. She had gone to get the dolly. You said you were maneuvering the refrigerator up on the porch. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, who was telling me the truth? You want to tell me? It was a very hectic day. It was a very happened. hectic day. Yeah. And I have photographs of your dog, despite the fact that you tell me that your dog is never off leash, always on leash. I have three photographs taken three different times of your dog being off leash. Now, there's no question that your dog caused the injuries to the dog. This has been going on for over a year in court. They dismissed it in criminal court, and there's a reason why they dismissed it. I... Just a second. Yes, You're going to try to tell me why they dismissed the case in criminal court? You have a document? I mean, I understand that they filed a criminal case against you. There was a criminal case that was dismissed, Your Honor. That's okay. That has nothing to do with this civil proceeding. You know, somebody may not want to put you in jail because you let your pit bull roam around without a leash. Somebody may not want to put you in jail, but you are clearly responsible for this dog's injuries. You are. If you have a pit bull, and pit bulls can be dangerous dogs, they can turn on a dime and cause serious injury. Pit bull lovers, I don't want to hear from you. I've been going through it for 25 years. Some of them are nice. Some of them are not nice. But when they're not nice and they turn, they have configurations that can cause a great deal of injury. One killed a woman who was babysitting for it. I understand you. you, do you so you I do believe, understand. I you believe, do. I believe, may I say something? I believe that a dog is how it was raised. Okay, I've raised that dog from a baby. She's not, she's never been mean like that. That dog that lives next door, which is Miss Stevens's dog, yaps at my dog every single day. She goes outside, yaps, 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 yaps at her. So what you're telling me is your dog, <laughs> so if what you're telling me is that your dog had the right to be aggravated because the dog yaps at her all the time, that's not a reason to let any dog 
but especially a dog that has potential to cause injury out without a leash. And you do that regularly, and you can't do that. Your Honor, can I also add that I did have a brief interaction with Miss Stevens on the day that it occurred, and it seemed like she did come out of the street with the dog. I don't believe she was in the driveway. She offered help for me. She did? Yes, before I went home. And Where was she? Interrupt, but I, we also have video of her acknowledging fault with the, the officer's body cam video. What is that? Um, they have a body cam on when he was talking to her when she said she's really sorry and she's going to pay the vet bill. Oh, may I see that, please? Oh, okay. And she jumped out of the car when she seen that little dog because I was getting ready to get in the car and gotcha. right on the corner here. Okay. So were they just across the street then? No, they were right here. They were just right here on yeah. the sidewalk. Okay. I'm well, I'm gonna pay the bill, I know. And whatever I gotta do. Yeah, so she's down at the clinic now. It was a bite on her on the shoulder, I think. On the shoulder? Yeah. Okay. And he, she was just protecting me because sure. that's all. And I'll pay the bill. Now you're responsible. And I want to apologize. So. Sure. I feel bad. I, I do feel bad about it. I do love dog. I'm a dog lover. And I do feel bad. And I believe she just said, the defendant just said that she was in the street when that happened. It was in my driveway that happened, Your Honor. I'm just saying, we want to be honest. Was before. the dog, was your dog on a chain? My dog was on a chain, Your Honor. Another thing, I never got my side of the story added to that at all. It was all one-sided. The whole police report was one-sided, Your Honor. I didn't look at a police report, I madam. Have one right here. Just a second. I didn't look at a police report. I listened it's to your I listened to you. Yes, Your Honor. And I listened to your witness. Yes. And you and the witness that you brought told two divergent stories, two totally different stories. She was your witness. Yes easily confused, but she was your witness, and you should have prepared her better, consistent with what your answer was. Do you understand? Yes, Sean, I wasn't trying to... Very, her. very good. Okay. Pain and suffering, unfortunately, is not yours. If you had had injury to yourself, and I think that the law is a little crazy there, but we can gauge pain and suffering for an animal. Anyway, your vet bills were $435. Your Honor, we just added that just because, you know... I understand. ...blatant disregard and, she, and the dog's still out all oh, the time. Oh, no, excuse me. The total with tax was $441. Judgment for the plaintiff. Thank you very much. We're Thank familiar. you. This court is adjourned. It's been a struggle just because of how long it's been going on. It was a crazy day. The dog almost got to our dog's leg bone and broke it. Because the dog is always japping at my dog. It was pretty scary. So it surprised me that that happened. He was bleeding and everything. She's not vicious whatsoever. We ran him up to the hospital. The animal control never came in my house. I had a feeling that Judy would see right through her, so. I love dogs, and I felt sorry for the little dog. I'm happy about the settlement and how we got our money. I'm not even going to get on my soapbox with regard to dogs that are potentially dangerous. There's no question that this lady has a dog that she's had from a puppy and she, the dog has never caused her any difficulty, mm -hmm. but there's also no question that she lets that dog out without a leash. I mean, they had proof of different occasions of the dog out and about. After yeah, this after happened. after this incident. After this incident. So you can, I think that's also a great lesson, that you can feel bad and be an animal lover and want to take care of the bill. But if you don't take any subsequent remedial measures to fix your bad behavior that caused this great deal of injury, then I don't really believe you that you feel sorry or that you're a dog lover. Because, well, that's an, that's an interesting yeah. perspective. Yeah, I mean, you knew what you had to do to ensure the safety of the dogs and other people in your neighborhood, and you chose not to do that. So 